Go ahead. Yeah. Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast. This is episode 145. I am Steve Crane, joined by Nate Hale next to me. Uh, Nate and Dustin held it down last week, so um, for better or worse, you guys are stuck with me again this week. <laughs> Nate, yeah, we, we, more. We, we did our best last week. You guys did fantastic. I was uh, very pleased as I was falling in and out of uh, sleep slash consciousness. <laughs> yeah. No, no we, all right. Yeah, we, uh, we definitely missed you. We missed having you last week, but... Uh, no, we uh, we really appreciate uh, the people that hung on and uh, were commenting and participating in the chat. That was helpful. Yeah. Uh, tried to incorporate them a little bit more uh, since you weren't here. And then also thanks to Shannon. Yeah. For in the, at the intermission, Shannon came up and sat right in between Dustin and myself. And uh, it was good to have a third person as uh, part of the conversation. So that way it wasn't just two of us. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And I thought you guys did a great job. So I, I do want to thank everyone and uh, for the support and everything like that. Uh, like I said, better or worse, here I am. <laughs> so, uh, I don't want to keep him waiting too much longer, our special guest tonight. But I do want to thank our sponsors, Tinderbox at Easton. They have sponsored us tonight with the Hoy de Monterey Epicure Selection, which we'll get into. That's a Honduran Puro. We'll kind of get into this. I think we're going to be a little bit more whiskey heavy tonight. But uh, we're going to smoke that. Pick something kind of medium bodied. To kind of go yeah. with two different bottles. So we'll get into that here a little bit. Uh, also, Altidus USA, I've got the Espada. I grabbed the Espada Oscuro that you guys got to enjoy last week. Yeah. So you're welcome. And also, thank you to Altidus. <laughs> but we went with the Espada this week, which is a Nicaraguan Puro, medium-bodied as well, just in case we get to that point. And then BS Cigar Company, I got the BS Silver right here. We are running low on the golds, but we should uh, be able to get those back in here shortly, hopefully. So if you guys are interested, if you uh, need to reach out to the podcast, reach out to uh, Tinderbox at East in Columbus, Ohio. They'll have the Hoya de Monterey along with other uh, cigar selections if you guys need to. I want to thank again. We shipped out over the, uh, the last week to Sean uh, out in California. Shipped him a package along with his uh, Patreon t-shirt. And that is our last sponsor there. Last but certainly not least, uh, patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast. That's where you guys can actually support us. And we appreciate all the support you guys have uh, provided also, us and continued. We also picked up a new uh, 25 tier uh, patron last Austin. week, right? Yeah. Austin. And he's uh, lining stuff up. He's uh, yeah. what, what's the, the, the Facebook page there? The, the bourbon collective collective. Yeah. Yeah. So I, check I, them out. I met him uh, a few months back at a, a bourbon and guns event. So. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Always goes well together, not necessarily in that order. But. Yeah, yeah, other way. All right, that being said, without uh, further ado, uh, patreon.com, please do check that out. I don't want to glance over that too much. That is, uh, you guys have been amazing, and uh, hopefully we can continue to, to do that. And I will get into one of the reasons why I was not very active this last week um, here for part two. But, yeah. Anything else? I'm ready. Cool. Well, like I said, we've got uh, a special guest tonight. Terry Losoff uh, from Wheel Horse Whiskey. Terry, what's going on, brother? Hey, guys. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for, for being here. You look a lot warmer than we are. <laughs> you're indoors. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got, got a flannel shirt on, got the heat cooking, so we're, we're good. Nice. nice. It's we got getting propane. cold here. Yeah, it's getting cold here, too. I think we've got a couple days uh, that are going to be all right. Yeah, we got coming some 60s up. coming up. Yeah. Just to get everyone sick all over again. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> fantastic. Um, but I, you know, for the viewers that were in listeners last week, I am feeling much better. I've been 100% for about four days. Um, really, since Thursday, I've been better. So I wish everyone out there, I know we got a lot of shit going around, including uh, COVID and the flu and the cold and God knows what else. So, guys, take care of yourself. Take your vitamin D3. Uh, drink your whiskey. And uh, you can take vitamin D3 with your whiskey. Uh, I encourage that. Kind of like kind of streamline that if you could. So, um, so Terry, <laughs> we got two bottles in front of us. Yes. And they are both Wheel Horse Whiskey products. They are indeed. So just to kind of go over this, people aren't as familiar possibly, especially in the Ohio area where we're located because you yep. guys have not distributed yet to the state, which is not uncommon. But uh, Nate's got the rye, which is a 101. <clears throat> yeah, they're both they're both 101 proof. Yes. Rye and bourbon. So you got a 101 rye, which you said you released back in January of this year. Yeah. When everything was still normal. 
<laughs> yes, it was it was right at the end of that time frame. We we bottled I remember bottling the the uh, rye uh, late December, probably right before Christmas time. And then we started getting it out into the market January and February. So, uh, you know, it was it was definitely an interesting time to launch a new product, a new brand. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the last eight months for the for the alcohol industry, at least on the off premise, the retail side have have uh, been um, up sales wise. But launching a new brand during this time frame has certainly been an interesting experience. I imagine it's tough to get some uh, traction there. Yeah, I mean we've actually done really well with it, but uh, yeah, it, it's 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 been it's been uh, I would say more challenging than normal because you don't have people, you know, walking around, hanging around retail stores as much, looking at the aisles and scoping out what's new. True, uh, you're you know a lot lot more people going in and kind of going after what they know. So talk to us about wheel, let, let, before we actually get into wheel wheel horse itself. Um, you have a background in the craft brew, craft spirits. Um, you said over a decade, about 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, Wheel Horse, just to kind of tie it all together, um, Wheel Horse is a, is a partnership between my company, Latitude Beverage, who I've been working for for about five years. We're a wine and spirits company in Boston uh, and um, Owensboro Distilling Company, which is um, in Owensboro, Kentucky. And right. uh, we can talk more about them. It's a really cool historic story they have. Uh, but, um, yeah, I was, uh, before I came over to Latitude, I was working in the marketing agency business for about 15 years doing mostly stuff with, with, uh, uh, breweries, craft beer, you know, the kind of the explosion of beer happened, uh, when I was doing a lot of work within that, not to say I had anything I'm part of that, but it was fun to be a part of the explosion of craft beer. That industry for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I, I actually, you know, I've been a, a, uh, a, um, huge, whiskey you know spirits beer wine guy for a long time i i launched a uh, blog drinkinsider.com uh, in 2010 right. and um it was kind of pre all these podcasts starting to come out what you guys are doing now there, there there was none of that at that point but uh so i was just writing about lots of stuff and um a lot of whiskey tried a lot of whiskeys uh, through that um and and just became a huge fan so it was kind of a full circle dream of mine to launch a, a, uh, my own whiskey essentially. Um, and, uh, that's kind of how we got, got to where we are. So you, you start, you started in the, the marketing side of it and that was your own, these were your own companies that you're working for or you started. Is that, I mean, I'm trying, to I did, I actually started, yeah, I started two, um, two agencies starting in like the early two thousands and we were me and a partner of mine kind of built these two businesses. We were working, with a lot of breweries at the time, there was other companies as well, but those were the most exciting ones. Um, yeah. And uh, and sold the second one, uh, then went to work for another agency for a little while before coming over Latitude, uh, and that that kind of merged my marketing background with my uh, my passion of uh, uh, wine and spirits, and um, we've been doing some you know really cool stuff at Latitude. You know, in, in the context of Wheel Horse, we're essentially the brand builder. Uh, we created Wheel Horse, but we're also an independent bottler, uh, which is a pretty common thing in the you know the spirits business, especially the whiskey business. Okay, gotcha. Go ahead, Nate. What? <laughs> I'm adjusting the volume here, so. Ah, okay. You know, you have one week where you're kind of like running the show, and I said, "Go ahead, Nate." And you're like, "What?" Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared. All right, like last week, I, I thought had, like that was like a good run. No, no last week I had like you know a day to to get ready to do that. Fair. I had to psych myself into it. We had some volume issues. They were saying on the live feed that you were louder than us. So that's another thing the Streamyard has actually done. They've added like auto mic, uh, you know, volume adjustment and stereo and all this stuff. I'm like, just just stop. You guys are you, you, you're making it too pretty. All right, so like going back to that, you, you sold, you said that the, the drinkinsider.com, you're still doing that actively, correct? Well, you know, I, I would say that it's uh, taken it? a backseat yeah, recently. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I uh, approached Will Horse and whiskey as a lover of whiskey, as a whiskey geek who's been drinking, um, you know, whiskey from all over the world, but especially American whiskey for, for a while. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, you know, it's, that's definitely how I kind of approached it, but, um, uh, uh, yeah. 
So you basically, over 15 years, you started do, doing the, the business side of it, which is where you're trained a little bit more. And then you, you, you self-trained yourself on the uh, alcohol side of it. And uh, you basically just created your own resume uh, over uh, 15 years of drinking and talking about <laughs> drinking. Well, there's did a lot I, of did drinking. I get that yeah. right? Is that like the yeah, cover sheet? Yeah, on your yeah to, to a certain extent, um, <laughs> I think that, that. Uh, you know, I was I was doing a lot of work in the beer business and and learning the beer business from the marketing side of things, and through that, you know, became very excited about the alcohol space as a whole. Yeah. And, uh, and and yeah, I would say that was kind of a, a explore as you move along kind of thing. You know, when I was writing about whiskey and wine, it was it was done so as a passion. You know, it wasn't a, a business at the time. So, um, you know, when I had the opportunity to merge the two pieces of my uh, kind of passion and my history of of marketing uh, with Latitude Beverage, uh, which is where I'm at now, that that was kind of a, a dream. And um, I launched our spirits division um, about a year and a half, two years ago. And um, so, you know, yeah, Latitude. So like I said, we, we you know, we, we're a brand building company. We, we, uh, we come up with ideas and, and build brands like, like Wheel Horse. And um, so that was, that was when my CEO asked me what I wanted to do, I said, we are going to launch a rye. We are launching a Kentucky rye. Yeah. And we came up with the Wheel Horse brand and we found an amazing partner. Uh, but the rye was the first of the two to come out, uh, like I said, and um, that was as a whiskey lover. That was kind of my my uh, wish list item. What the, the rye? Kentucky rye. Yeah. Why is that? You know, I I think that I'm that, with you I'm, on that yeah, I'm just a, a huge rye fan, and there's obviously a lot less rye in the market than than bourbon. A, a lot less options, especially in the price point we're at, which is uh, you know under thirty dollars. There's not a lot of really good go-to rise in that category and, and i just felt like you know for me i wanted a, a an everyday go-to rye that was delicious that was um you know something i could sip neat or put in a cocktail or whatever and yeah. um it was just it, it was purely a a, a a kind of a, a passion motive <laughs> i love good rye i mean i really yeah. do I'm, I'm with you on that because and again like you said it's not a saturated but it is i feel like that is the next hit coming yeah um, i mean you know you, we've world. seen we've definitely seen more come out over the last year or two like old forester came out with one and um you know th there's more but it's still obviously a, a very small percentage of the overall american whiskey market compared yeah. to bourbon okay well why the name wheel horse did we go over this i mean i know i was trying to fix the volume and everything like that but i mean i mean the, the name wheel horse you make it sound like when i hear you talk uh, about it, you know, it's it's very new and everything like that. And then I see on here, you guys, I love the the, the packaging, obviously. Um, Thank you. But uh, it's a master distiller, Jacob Call, seventh generation Kentuckian and third generation distiller. Now he's yes. based out of Owensboro. Yeah. So you know, another thing that I have um, you know felt as a, a whiskey lover and a whiskey mm -hmm. geek is that uh, authenticity is important. And yeah. I want to know where my whiskey is coming from. And um, so that's why we, we created a very transparent partnership with uh, Owensboro Distilling Company, which is um, previously known as OZ Tyler. Yep. Uh, they've been around since the late 1800s, not under that name, but uh, it, it's, it's one of the oldest permitted distilleries in Kentucky. Um, and um, the, the original name was, was Green River. And so, uh, you know, I knew from the get-go that I wanted to, I wanted to do this. We needed to find a great partner, and I wanted to make it very transparent that uh, this is where the whiskey's coming from. Yeah. So I'm working with Jacob, who's the master distiller there. He's great, um, and uh, you know, selecting barrels, uh, putting together batches, uh, putting together the the profile, uh, proof point. You know, all, all that stuff is is kind of a collaboration, but driven by what I wanted this product to be. And this is uh, ninety five percent rye, five percent malted barley. Yeah, yeah. The rye is, uh, which is kind of a a classic. Uh, I, I want to say classic MGP uh, rye mash bill, yeah. uh, which was very prominent and to a certain extent is still prominent in the the American rye space. The MGP uh, profile and the MGP um, you know whiskey from from Indiana. But um, yeah, they they 
they had uh, a little rye, I would say. We were the first ones. So let me just give a little background on, on Owensboro Distilling Company because it's, it's kind of a cool story. So they they launched in the late 1800s under the name Green River. They're on the banks of the uh, Ohio River in, in western Kentucky. So if you're if you're like in Bardstown or Louisville, where like most of the uh, bourbon trail distilleries are, you have to want to go to Owensboro because it's like a couple hour drive west. Oh, wow. Okay. They're, they're way out there, but they have been there since the late 1800s producing uh, bourbon. And, um, you know, they've gone through uh, several different owners over that time for, for a long time. In like the mid 1900s, they were owned by the Medley family. Uh, so they were producing whiskeys for, um, you know, uh, brands like Ezra Brooks, uh, Mellow Corn, Old Medley, a lot of the, that Medley family. Um, and then, you know, like a lot of distilleries in the 90s, they uh, when the bourbon, uh, you know, the bourbon industry was kind of tanking, uh, they shut down and they were, they were shut. The, the, the distillery was shut down for a couple of decades before um, it was purchased by another company in um 2014, they brought on um, Ron Call, who's Jacob Call's father. Ron was uh, he's a he's a master distiller who's been in the industry for about 40 years, oh, wow. uh, spent about 30 of those years at uh, Beam. And then he was uh, with uh, Florida distiller, uh, Florida uh, Caribbean distillers as well. And he brought his son Jacob in who had grown up around the whole uh you know, the bourbon industry in, in, in Kentucky. And um, so Ron and Jacob created a new whiskey program at the new OZ Tyler. And um, uh, they started putting down barrels, I would say in like 2016. Okay. So, you know, they don't have super age stocks. And, and I came in, I met them. I loved what they were doing. Um, and nobody had really put out any of their whiskeys yet. Uh, so we were the first ones to, uh, they had a little bit of aged rye in that like, two and a half to three and a half year, uh, uh, range, uh, which we, we say, um, and we're, we're very transparent about, um, you say uh, at least two years, right? Yeah. At least two years, which is legally what you have to say, but they're between two and a half and four years is, uh, where those rise are at, where the, the rye and the bourbon age is at. And, um, so, so the wheel horse rye was the first time that this distillery that had been around for 130 years had ever put out a rye whiskey. Um, so Jacob, yeah, Jacob, uh, he's doing a great job down there. And um, I, I've been really excited about the, the the collaboration that I've built with him over the last say, what, year. They're the, the, he's the master distiller. What's like, what's your role? Like, I, I mean, you, you obviously are working hand in hand with him on that. But I mean, with this having your guys' name on, I found it interesting also is that the, uh, the rye says uh, Ocean State Distillers. And then that was, uh, uh, yeah, it was, the, the bourbon says uh, Latitude. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the we we're not bottling at their facility. We're bottling in our facility. Okay. Um, so yeah, all of them are from after the first one, we have our own uh, bottling um, rectifying uh, facility in, in the, on the East Coast that we're uh, bringing the whiskey in and bottling it. Okay. Okay. But I mean, like yeah. when it comes to this, I mean, are, are you working with them hand in hand, or are they sending you like samples? Are you traveling to them? Are you how? I guess your role being being the spirits director. I would assume that you've got a pretty hands-on approach with this, with a lot of trust on their their end as well, though. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's you know, it's their distillery, and it's Jacob's. You know, he's the master distiller. I'm I'm not a master distiller, um, so I, I have kind of full trust in what they're doing. And, and and honestly, I think that if you're a whiskey fan, you should be beyond wheelhorse looking at uh, uh, Owensboro Distilling Company and Green River as their own brand that they're going to be launching soon. Because Green I think River. it's a really exciting uh, new, you know, slash old distillery yeah. that's coming out in Kentucky. Um, I would put them kind of right there with some of the other um, uh, like Peerless and New Riff and some of the other uh, Kentucky, newer Kentucky distilleries. Yeah. They, they, they should be on people's watch. Um, I just kind of found them early and was able to get in early and, and, and get get start sourcing uh, you know, whiskey from them. Um, so, but you know, they, they, they do what they do. I was traveling down there until COVID hit. Yeah. Um, and, um, are you traveling you know, again yet or no, not yet, not yet. Okay. So, so we've been, you know, this year we've been counting on samples and, uh, doing blends. Um, we were originally going to release the bourbon earlier this year, but, uh, it took us 
until um, you know about last month for for the product for the whiskey to get to where I wanted it to be. I'm yeah. really happy how it came out. Now, do you do that? I mean, like with the whiskeys. I mean, for the, for the listeners out there. Um, are they sending you multiple like handfuls or like uh, how many different samples when you started this project? Cause I, I find it fascinating because we've done something like that in the cigar side with the yeah. cigar and we're, you know, we're, not, I want to say we're constantly tweaking, but I mean, for us, you know, with it being kind of small batches for us and we're picking from their tobacco and then we have a blend, but each time we, we get a shipment in, it's, it's sometimes slightly different just because it's, that's how this stuff works. You know what I mean? There's a quality control there, but it's going to be a little different on the smaller volume. So, um, when you were picking out, say the, the rye for starters, how many different samples did you go through? Or do they like, do they say, Hey, these are your three choices. I mean, are you saying, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. How does that work working through them? Well, we were, you know, we were just talking before the, you, you, the, the show started about yeah. what is a small batch. Right. And, and that's kind of a, yeah, it's a, it's a stretch uh, term anymore. It's a stretch term. And, you know, so our small batches are, are not like just a couple barrels, uh, but they're not, they're not like uh, as much as, you know, they're not over a hundred barrels by any means, yeah. um, at least not yet. So, so, uh, you know, it's a matter of tasting certain barrels. I can't taste all the barrels, but tasting certain barrels um, and, uh, you know, which are kind of varying ages and putting that together. You know, and I think we set a bar with batch one of the rye and batch one of the bourbon that, you know, from here on out, we're going to try to get to that. Yeah. Uh, so so that all of our batches, um, you know, meet that bar. Uh, and I think, you know, over time, you know, we will start getting into older stocks because they are uh, putting down a lot of barrels and we are putting down barrels with them now, too. OK, so um, yeah, there's a collaborative yeah. effort there yeah. as well. Yeah. So so, you know, eventually I think we'll we'll get into um, some opportunities to launch, like for instance, a single barrel program, uh, yeah. and, um, and, and some older, older, maybe age statement whiskey. Age statement. Are you looking at like maybe barrel proof? Cause that's all the, the rage obviously is, is some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Strength. So a again, as like a, as a whiskey fan, I wanted to make this a higher proof whiskey. Like that yep. was never in question. I never wanted to go below 95 proof. That was just kind of where my starting point, but I also wanted to create a whiskey and that that you could drink neat without adding water to it so it's kind of like looking at between 95 and like around 105 110 proof um so we're at 101 which is where we where i netted out and i felt like it it tasted really good you could drink it neat but it could also stand up to ice it could stand up to a cocktail but you know with the, with a single barrel program we'll definitely go barrel proof okay. and i think with age statement whiskeys down the road if we can do that we'll go barrel proof yeah is 101, is it a tip of the hat to who I think it is, or is it just coincidence? Uh, you know, it's there's a lot of 100 proof whiskeys out there. Yeah. I want it yeah. to be a little different. Uh, I, I obviously know that, you know, Wild Turkey has 101 <laughs> and, and that there's a few other 101s out there. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, part of it was like I was tasting it at every proof point and I liked that taste. I liked that at 101. Uh, was it that much different than 100? Not really. Yeah. I just thought it was a little better. I, you know, I, I like it. I mean, if you want to talk about it, you're still on your first glass or do you already? No, I'm on my first glass. Okay. I just want to check. Are you guys <laughs> drinking the rye right now? Yes. We're drinking the rye first. Are you, are you sipping on rye? Yeah. I've got the rye here too. Okay. Um, so with the rye, I think it's, I'm shocked. Just you guys, with you knowing what you're, you, you know, as far as the background, it kind of shows once you get to know the people behind the, the project a little bit. And the fact that you've been doing more or less like a review site with the drinkinsider.com, you kind of know what you like and what seems to be over the last, you said 10 years or so yeah. with the drink insider, you've been a, like when you're, you're forcing yourself to kind of take note of marketing of the color of the juice of, of the age of all the, like the, you got the basics, if you will. But when it comes down to the whole package, I feel like you're the type of person that you would want on a project because you've been so astute to what you think is is gonna sell and and what's gonna be just good inside of a bottle but the bottle has to be pretty but it can't overshadow the bottle you know what's in right. it you know that type of of project but uh with with this I, I i think that i'm shocked at what you said the msrp is and how it's drinking i mean the it's very easy drinking um the color's great i think this would go i think this would go really well in a cocktail 
when I when I first sip it, I don't get a whole lot right off the rip. Yeah. But then there's this spice that just builds and builds. And it really does. It continues to build. The fi- the finish does. Like it doesn't go away. It gets stronger. Yeah, but it doesn't get too hot. No. Um, what's the flavor? I'm, I, it, I don't want to say caramel. There's something kind of lingering there. Like, I mean, at at, at, yeah. at first it almost tasted like initially before the spice hit. Yeah. I was like, do I taste cough syrup? <laughs> but it's not. It's not cough. It's syrup. not cough syrup. Yeah, don't put that on the brochure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we use certainly that on, did not use that on your shelf talker. Um, but no, and then all of a sudden yeah, the, the like spice a, just hits. Yeah, it's kind of like it, a. It's, it's I, more of a like a food or pepper spice, huh. not a black pepper. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, I, you know, I think this is uh, this was uh, you were kind of getting at. This is a culmination of 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 my personal journey. Uh, but finding um, Owensboro Distilling Company uh, was a big part of this process because uh, you know part of this was about where are we going to source whiskey from, and yeah. I was very excited to find them because they're basically brand new on the scene and they have something new to offer. And I think that that both of these wheel horse, the bourbon and the rye are, are a unique entry in the market, especially at that like $30 price point or under yeah. 30 in, in some markets. Uh, the rye, I mean, you know, these are, these are younger, you know, whiskeys. I'm not going to lie about that. They're, you know, in the, like I said, two and a half to four year range. Um, but you can get a lot of flavor. They're using a uh, uh, number four char barrels. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's aging in, um, you know, non-climate control rick houses that have been on the property since like the 1920s. Uh, there's a lot of history there, uh, and and they're in Kentucky, so you're getting a lot of flavor and you're getting a lot of color um, in in a fairly short period of time. But they're you know they're using 53 gallon new American oak barrels, obviously, and yeah, doing um, traditional not, style here. Yeah, they're not they're not uh, they're, it's they're sour mash whiskeys. They're not taking shortcuts. Uh, this is you know. They're making some great juice down there, I think, and um, you know, I I I, I, I think know. it's getting, a pretty unique product. I don't know. It's like the, obviously you get like that molasses, the oak, and some of the the traditional ones with this one, but I, I think there is a little bit of that spice to it. Um, I would be interested to see. I mean, it's you br- you bring that up, and I'm trying to look at it as a, a steal for thirty dollars, and it's like I, I wonder if, if if it was a little bit older you know, how much it would, would alter that? Would it make it a little more complex? I mean, would it, would it be a little bit, um, it, it's, there's not much burn or anything. It's not hot. It's not, no. you know what I mean? It's not this, it's, it doesn't taste young. I, I think it's, I mean, it's got a, just a, a nice flavor. I see what Nate's saying where you could put it in a cocktail, which is not an insult. I don't think for a, no, I mean, I, I, I definitely think you should be using this for cocktails. It's this act the rye. I think a lot of non rye drinkers have liked this. I've noticed because it has a, a kind of a, a sweetness to it yes. that you would typically associate with bourbon. Yeah. Um, and, 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 uh, I think the sweetness balances the spice that a lot of people often, you know, might be turned off on with a rise, like the, a lot of spice and dryness. Um, and so I think it works really well in, in like an old fashioned and, you know, or, yeah. or even a Manhattan, you know, dial back the sweet vermouth or dial back the, the, you know, the sugar a little bit. And, um, cause there is a, an inherent sweetness in the rye that I think works really well with those kind of cocktails. See, I, I think maybe that's uh, like the brown sugar I'm getting a little bit too. Yeah, I, I think a Manhattan would be good for this because for me, I don't get so much sweetness. I get so much spice. Mm. So I think that's why I said like putting this in a cocktail would be really good just because it would balance out. Because like, I mean, it had been a while since I had last taken a sip and yet that spice was still lingering mm-hmm. still there. on my palate. Like it stays and stays. It has a and great it, spice for sure. Yeah, it's a it's a good flavor. It just builds and builds and then it stays there for a while. And so I think a cocktail like a Manhattan or an old fashioned would balance that out a little bit. It may draw out more of the sweetness out of the rye. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, the sweetness is nice. I think that would be more, you know, uh, universal. Th- this for for me, this time of the year where you're at in Massachusetts and us being in Columbus, Ohio, yeah, it's starting to cool down a bit. This is something that's nice on a night like tonight. Now, if it's 90 degrees and, you know, you're, you're sweating your balls off and you're like, hey, what do I want to grab from my bar and drink neat right now? Maybe yeah. not. Maybe not this one. Maybe not this one. But throw an ice cube or, or two, maybe that would soften it up a little bit. 
Um, while we're pouring, I want to pour the uh, the bourbon here. I just poured it in my uh, my glass here, but I do want to throw up. We had. I think this is something that people ask a lot of times. You've been uh, working on this project for a couple years now, and and Ray is one of our loyal listeners, and and so he's looking at it as is there really much opportunity left in the whiskey industry at this point? Seems that there are so many new companies now trying to compete. Must be somewhat saturated at this point. When someone asks you that, I'm sure you get that question sometimes when, you know, you're like in that, that industry, when you were doing the craft brew stuff as yeah. well, it's kind of like, yeah. Hey, you know, how many craft brews can we have? Yeah, like, yeah. And you're like, <laughs> at least one more. And yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, when someone asks that questions, like, you know, like obviously the, the bourbon and the whiskey industry is still very hot. Um, but I mean, you're, yeah, you're walking in the door, especially again, talking about your background, doing the drink insider.com when you're doing that and you're, you're working on these new projects with latitude, um you're like i've been reviewing this stuff for well over a decade now hey let's make one <laughs> so you know it is a crowded space there's no denying that i personally felt that we should start with rye for two reasons one i mentioned before because i personally love rye and uh just wanted to do rye first but yeah. the other reason was because there's less of a uh, uh there, there, there's less competition in the rye space uh especially at this price point there's really not a lot of really good uh rye options in that 30 dollar price point so i saw an opportunity there and that's why i went there first so we could yeah. create a name for wheel horse uh, uh without going into bourbon first and then we came in with the bourbon second which was kind of the idea uh so you, you've already kind of established yourself on the rye uh, aisle and then you have a bourbon that that comes right behind that. And I, I do think that there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of new whiskey brands coming out. There's there's no doubt about that. I see new whiskey brands on Instagram every day. Yeah. I'm like, where the frick did that come from? I have no idea. I've yeah, never seen that one before. What does rock star know about? <laughs> what does a celebrity yeah, know right, about right. bourbons? <laughs> yeah. So uh, so yeah, it's getting crowded. But uh, I think that there's there are opportunities for good products at good price points i mean the whole the whole like movement of the bourbon industry to a certain extent is kind of like it, it's pissed me off over the last few years because it's gotten so expensive there's you know the, the yes. price points for the higher end bourbons are just getting out of control i used to buy stuff for you know reasonable prices and now like forget about it it's 200 dollars, 250 if you, can, if you can even get it yeah and then you go to secondary market and you're like get off it like stop it's yeah for, yeah so I everybody's going after this. the a lot of a lot of brands and people are going after that kind of shiny object the high end the 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 you know 75 dollar plus the 100 dollar plus category and 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 i saw an opportunity to go with your everyday drinker i mean we're not trying to create with wheel horse like your next like mind blowing hundred fifty dollar whiskey that you're not going to be able to find. We're trying to create the best thirty dollar every day. I'm going to pull this out of my you know cabinet and I can put it in my cocktail or I can drink it neat and I'm going to be psyched. Well, it's nice too. I think it's it's always it's funny you say that some of like the the ones that are tougher to find are the real expensive. The prices are going up. The issue that I find is that there are some bottles that I really enjoy, especially on the bourbon side that there are some that I can find and again, Ohio is different, but there are, it, it's, it's heartbreaking when you, you know, you, you kill half a bottle of something that you, you paid $80, hundred dollars for, because it was like a special one that you really wanted, you enjoy, but almost anymore, it's even as heartbreaking burning through like a $35 bottle of, of booze that I know I'm going to have to ask someone who's down in Kentucky on the right day yeah, yeah. to <laughs> fucking yeah. buy me another bottle. Or otherwise it's like, I don't feel bad because I didn't spend a whole lot of money on it. But now that's gone, and I can't even buy it for another, you know, 30, 35 bucks. Yeah. So it's nice to see something that maybe you you do enjoy, and then you kill the bottle, and you say, hey, honey, when you're down at the liquor store, you mind picking me up another bottle of Wheel Horse bourbon? Yeah. Like, well, yeah, I, I hope bottle. we'll be in Ohio soon, and we can make I mean, that yeah. happen. But well, uh, we've talked about it before, where and I, and I like what you said about it. We've we've had a lot of we've talked about a lot of times um, some of the newer ones that come up. We tend to see them start around like that fifty dollar price point and go up from there. Yeah, and it's it's difficult to pull the trigger on a fifty to sixty dollar bottle when you've never had it before and it's something new. Yeah, and it's something small. But 
you know, thirty dollars. That's easy to pull the trigger on. And a lot of that stuff is young too, like you know, really young. Um, you know, two year old product for sixty dollars, seventy dollars. Um, I hate to pick on Pure List uh, because I do like that's good their stuff. whiskey. It is good, but they came out price. with a hundred dollar rye that was two years old, two and a half years old, and it's very good. But is it worth? A hundred dollars. That price tag is a lot harder to swallow than the actual bottle itself. That is for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm not, I'm uh, not Ian's trying asking, to. Ian's asking, "Are you guys in Tennessee? Do you know?" Uh, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tennessee is is one of the places we are at. Perfect. Oh, Nate, put on the. Well, I, I thought he was Kentucky. talking about where he's based. They're out of Massachusetts. Oh. They're, uh, doing this yes. in Kentucky, and yes, it is available in Tennessee. <laughs> that um, would answer all all of the above. Just, just, Throwing it all out there. Um, so I'm sipping on the bourbon. I'll, I understand why we wanted to start with the rye, with you saying that, you know, that's what you came out with at the beginning of the year when everything was normal. Now things are still not normal, and here we are with round <laughs> two. But it's batch one of the, the bourbon, which is what you guys sent us initially um, yep. uh, way back, and you guys wanted us to do the rye as well, which I'm glad you did. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. I will say going, and it's funny, 101 proof to 101 proof, when you go from that rye to this bourbon, like I have to like, I drank a little bit of water. I hit the so cigar. I'm like taking a few sips. That rye shocked my, my palate for sure <laughs> compared to this bourbon. I'm like, I took a sip of it. I'm like, all right, where is this? All right. I should have, I should have cleansed the palate here. Maybe took a little break because it is, uh, it's softer. Um, as far as yeah, for palate, sure. in my opinion, it's got, it's got that sweetness. It's a little like, um, some of the, I don't want to say similar characteristics, but it's, I'm trying to give it a little bit of time. It's it's for me at least, and I don't know you, uh, Terry, or even Nate. Like going from the rye to the bourbon, that that is a step back as far as spice for sure. And that lingering part from the rye that I had going, like I'm I'm waiting for that. Like it's still kind of like hanging out, See, like in the background. I thought it was maybe the bourbon because like I I had a couple sips of water, and then I went to the bourbon. And I got more of the sweetness up front with the bourbon. It was a softer uh, feel on the palate. But then just like the rye, there the, there was spice to it on the back end that built. Like it kept like even on the bourbon, the spice kept building on the back end and made the finish go longer. See, I'm getting like more like a fruit. Yeah, I mean the the bourbon does have twenty one percent rye, so there's there's a decent amount of rye in the mash bill. That makes uh, sense. Seven, seventy percent corn, nine uh, percent malted barley. Um, I, I again, I, I kind of personally like high rye mash bills on my bourbon. Yeah. Um, um, and so you do get a little bit of the spice there for sure, I think. But yeah, compared to the rye, the rye. You know, and I could have we could have gone bourbon first. That might have made sense from a, a palate perspective. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I was just from my story to perspective. I kind of like the rye yeah. first, just because I think that you know, um, people uh, who have had a chance to try Wheel Horse, they've most likely tried the rye because it's been out in the market for a year, um, and the bourbon's brand new. What What I find interesting. So, so last week we had a uh, a bourbon uh, coming out of Texas. Steve hadn't got hasn't tried it yet. And that was a uh, 70% corn as well. It was a, a white corn instead of yellow corn. And it was a 25% rye. Mm -hmm. This one's a 21% rye. I think this actually has, like, I taste more spice from this than I do the uh, bourbon from last week, which had 4% more rye. Same amount of corn, but it had 4% more rye. Yeah, like, I get more spice from this so it must be something out of the distillery now again the the what do you mean by that well because because both bottles the bourbon and the rye have that spice for me that builds on the finish i gotta hold yeah so i have to hold the bourbon a little bit longer in my mouth to get that burn now okay and maybe i'm also kind of like equalizing a little bit here you know what i mean but, but like uh, both bottles the the spice on the back end just kind of just it builds and, uh, you know, like I said earlier, it's more of a food spice, uh, not like a pepper. Yeah, now but, it's but it just, to but it just, bit, yeah. it just keeps building and it makes that finish last longer and longer. Now, yeah. uh, and so now that's what, it. that's what made me say, you know, something about this distillery with what they're doing. 
because both bottles have that characteristic. Yeah. There's definitely a, um, you know, a flavor profile that I think carries across both of these, um, that, that, um, Owensboro Distilling Company, Green River, you know, I think that that people will get to know them for. I think they have a, a, a pretty uh, interesting um, profile that that comes from, you know, a whole host of factors. Uh, I, I do think that there is like um, it's not a I don't find these super dry. I find them a little bit more fruit forward and a little yeah. bit more um, a little bit a little bit more of the sweetness, but it's it's really well balanced by spice and it's well balanced by some savory notes. Uh, I get some um, you know some nuttiness in, in the bourbon that I, I like quite a bit. Um, and uh, in the rye obviously you get a lot of that wood spice that that balances balances it out. but um, yeah. I'm still like you don't really talk about it a whole lot, but I, I did get a little fruit, especially on the nose. I got that fruit that uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's apple or what it is, but it's, it's definitely something there. Um, that, that I get, I definitely of, get a little or, a citrus and orange on the rye. Citrus. On the rye, on the, on the yeah, on, on the bourbon, I get like some more red fruits, like cherry, a little cherry, a little. Yeah. Um, so I didn't get, I didn't get much of anything uh, on the nose. Oh. <laughs> don't start that. <laughs> no, no. Uh, here we go. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're good. I mean, you, you keep talking about, you know, the Owensboro. Is this going to be more their distinct profile? Or are you thinking that there'll be a differentiating, differentiating factor with wheel horse being unique where, yeah, you brought up MGP earlier. And I think a lot of people yeah. will look at that. They're like, oh, this must be an MGP product. And I think that's just because they were putting out so many. Yeah. Um, but if you got this, you know, you got in, like you said, kind of early on the revitalization of this, this whole project with them. Um, I, do you think there, as they put their stuff out, it will remind people of wheel horse or vice versa, or do you think there's going to be, I mean, I, I feel like you, you're talking a lot about them, which it, it's understandable. I mean, I, obviously, I mean, you guys aren't, aren't necessarily have your hands on it and doing all the, 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 the work on that. But like you said, as you go from batch one to two, you yeah. try to create a, a, you're you're not going to be doing your own distilling in the future. That's that's kind of the current plans is to continue to source. Is that correct? Yeah, and, and you know I don't think what we're doing is is super unique. I, I know you guys had Chicken Cock on uh, not yes. too 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 long ago, and they're sourcing from Bardstown Bourbon Company, yeah. um, which is another great you know new newer distillery in Kentucky that's that that's doing some sourcing programs, and I think that. Uh, any any brand that's sourcing is, I mean, I I I, I want to be very transparent that um, Owensboro Distilling Company is making this, and but it's a partnership, and I do think that um, Wheel Horse will have a different profile because it's uh, going to be different age, it's going to be different batching, it's going to be different price uh, proof point, it's going to be yeah. different. Uh, you know, they might chill filter their whiskey. I don't know what they're going to do. We're not chill filtering. Um, yeah. uh, you know, so there's a lot of uh, factors that go into what makes the wheel horse uh, profile. Uh, when Green River comes out with their first whiskey, they haven't done it yet. Um, uh, I think it's going to be probably a four-year product. It might be a bottle and bond. Um, I've tasted some of their older whiskeys, and they, they um, obviously continue to develop. And um, yeah. I mean, it's probably going to be a lot more expensive than what we're putting out with Wheel Horse. But um, I think there's going to be similarities for sure, because it's the same distillery who's, you know, uh, using the same methods, the same uh, ingredients, uh, the same source of barrels uh, to the same the same aging warehouses, the same place. You know, there's a lot of things that a you, one distillery is doing that's going to make a flavor profile. So I think there's going to be similarities across uh, their products and our products, but th- there's different choices that can be made along the way that, that do create differences. Are, are there any labels coming out of this distillery that some of our listeners might recognize? Like what else are these guys making? So I know that, that there is some OZ Tyler product, which is the, the old name of this distillery in Kentucky. Um, but, uh, from what I understand, and I don't know the, the full story, uh, I believe they, they just, uh, recently renamed the distillery to green river. Yeah. Um, Owensboro distilling is kind of the, the mothership and green river is their particular brand that they only will have. And, um, 
that which was the original name the the distillery launched with in so 1800 green river then then oz oz was the old name they 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 got rid of oz and they renamed it to the original name green river uh within like the last couple so it months green it's all river, it's all then, OZ, then back to green river and yeah. probably a bunch so, of other things in between i i do believe that they'll be green river will be coming out with some products nice. um uh, I believe uh, they would, my understanding is is a four year bourbon. Um, I don't know when they're going to come out with that. Maybe it's the next year or so. Um, but there's nothing on the market right now except for uh, what we have with wheel, wheel horse. horse. Okay. No, it's, I mean, it's, I, I think you know you'll find it's it's interesting. Like with the the cigar world, when you look at that too. I mean, like it's coming out of you know certain factories, right? And they they've got especially the ones that that, that grow and use their own tobaccos as many different blends or, or brands and, and uh, you know, portfolios are out there. It's, it's a lot of the same tobacco, but it's the little mm -hmm. tweaks. It's absolutely you know, when you get, you get a Terry, like yourself, you know, you get a Terry in there with, with the call family and they've been doing their thing for long enough. And then you're like, well, what if you can do this? Or like, I really like this one. And they were like, yeah, we don't really like that, that batch. Or we didn't, you know, we're not really thinking that. Or, or I think when you get that third head in there, there's there's something else that can come out of some of these cigar factories something can come out of these these distilleries because you do have some of these families that have you know he's what th uh third generation distiller yep and you're working hand in hand with him it's different than working with his father it's different than you know and what they they have coming through sitting in those barrels you talk about the age you talk about the different char levels you know i think it's something that it's it's cool to be able to not hide behind it, and then you have to do the research like, oh, they don't do their own thing; they're they're just sourcing it. But I think people will will gloss over sometimes that yes, there are people that are literally like, I just want a whiskey or I want a bourbon, and that's it. That's that's my criteria. Send me three samples, mm -hmm. and I'll do it. But if you have more of an active role and the relationship expands, then all of a sudden it's like now you got three heads in there, you know, or two. Heads. It's more than just the distiller saying, hey, these are your you got one, two, and three. This is what you can pick this time. If you can, you know, establish that type of relationship with a distiller or a, a cigar manufacturer, where you're constantly wanting to try different things, or hey, what can you do this? And they look at you, they're like, Yeah, we've done it before, but it really hasn't worked out. And you're like, Well, can I, can I see what we can do with it? And sometimes it'll hit the second time or the third time, and it's just sitting there. Uh, so I like the idea of you guys are sourcing it, but at the same time. You're hands-on. You're new. You're going to see where this goes. You're working on different Absolutely. age statement ones. I think it's exciting, and I, I think with with Ray asking that question earlier on, you know, it's like you know, how, it's it's saturated. How much more can you do? There's a lot. There's I think there's a yeah. lot that you can do. The more heads and the more different angles you can look at the same barrels or the same like the mash bills that they have available, and especially if you went with like a like the small batch or you do like a, a blended whiskey. Sometimes people will. We'll gloss mm -hmm. over that as well. Like, oh, it's a blended whiskey. It's like that's where you can really start getting creative. You can you can put something in a bottle that's got different age statements that you've never had before. The way that this all the ingredients and the, the different um, you know the different batches going into that, I think that, I think that can really explode. Well, I think uh, you know back to what Ray had brought up. Like prior to you know, so both these came out in 2020. Prior to 2020, some people may have said that. Uh, the whiskey world was saturated, but yet here we have two bottles of rye and a bourbon that taste very different from anything that we've had before. Yeah, and he, we he had a good and, point on this. And yeah. we drink a lot of whiskey, uh, but these definitely taste different than anything that we've had before. They yeah. don't remind. I mean, if you me if you anything. look at the if you look at the the bourbon shelf, right, and you compare that to wine or beer. It's still way less saturated than than other categories in the alcohol space. Oh, for sure. So I, I think that there there's a lot of um, opportunity for uh, new distilleries and new brands uh, to create new paths and, and new uh, flavor profiles and and all kinds of things. I, I personally have probably two hundred bottles of whiskey open in my house, and I, I do that because there's a, so many different flavor profiles out there and, yeah. and you're in a different mood one night to the next. Uh, you know, this is, this is uh, your go-to everyday type of whiskey. It's not necessarily your, you know, uh, if for, for like a Saturday night with your best whiskey buddies, you know, you might pull out something else. Uh, that's, that's your hundred dollar, $150, you know, cult classic or whatever. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think there's there's yeah there's there's plenty of opportunity. Depend on the buddies over. I'm not busting out a hundred dollar <laughs> bottle. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. true. Exactly. I think this is a good question. I think that's what we're kind of talking about. And I, again, in no no way am I saying that's what you're doing, especially because there's nothing else on the market right now. But um, same same listener here. When you were doing the drinkinsider.com more actively, I assume you probably had this as you got into it, where he's asking, you know, are any of these large distilleries just pumping out product, which they will then dump into any brand bottles? And that's kind of what I was saying, that some people will come in and be like, <clears throat> for example, give a little – little bit of a, a tie into the the cigar world when we were blending the bs stuff right and we were working with them they had some yeah. blends that they had been working on but then it was always like hey can we tweak it like this hey can we do this can we you know like uh this is what we're thinking this is our starter and then there were other like major manufacturers like and i'm not going to say any names but they literally were like all right so these are our five blends here's a connecticut a corojo a cameroon a maduro and maybe a fifth one and then you just pick which one you want to do and we'll throw yeah. a band on it. You know, I, I think I think it question, really. I think there probably yeah. is that out there, but that's that's. It, it, var it, it varies. I think there are are, are are different situations for sourcing whiskey. Uh, I think that um, there are some some brands that just want a turnkey kind of thing. They just want to buy a, a, a whiskey that's already there, ready to go. Um, and there are some that want to be more involved. Uh, there are some that want to put down barrels from scratch and, and really have a hand in the process, which is what I think we're really trying to do. Uh, if you look at, again, I'm not trying to pick on MGP, but MGP was providing the vast majority of rye to uh, across the, 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 the whole rye aisle for a big chunk of the last you know, 10 years yeah. uh, as rye was exploding. So, uh, you know, MGP is an example of, you know, a, a larger producer that a lot of different brands were going to for product because they were the only ones that had, and, and they make good stuff. I, I like MGP uh, whiskeys. I think they, they have some great stuff there. Uh, and for a long time, uh, I think there was like a, a big shift in, in whiskey drinkers minds uh, within the last few years in regards to source product. When everybody started realizing that MGP was providing you know whiskey to like whistle pig and to you know all these others first of all the, the you know the whiskey geeks were pissed off about it like what the fuck you haven't been telling us about this and then now <laughs> like right now everybody know. wants mgp right product know. everybody's like oh you got a 13 year mgp like whiskey bourbon uh by that so we, you know like some of those very old Willet products yes exactly <laughs> the, the 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 mind the the mindset has shifted uh, and I think that the idea of sourced product is becoming much more uh, uh, people are open to it. But I, I do think there are different ways that people are going, different brands are going about it. Uh, like Chicken Cock, you know, they have a master distiller, uh, which obviously that means they are going to have. And, and he has a ton of cred. He's been in the industry for a long time. Yeah, Greg um, Yeah. And uh, so, so obviously their intention is to have a, a huge hand in, in the whiskey that's being made. Um, so there's, there's all the way from that, you know, down to like somebody who just wants like to dump barrels, uh, and, and all the way in between. And, we're, you know, I think we're trying to have a, um, we, we identified a small distillery, uh, you know, uh, Owensboro distilling company is not a, a behemoth that's just pumping out barrels yet. Yeah. Uh, and so that gives us the opportunity for me to work directly with Jacob and to, um, you know, create something that is a true collaboration, a true partnership. And that's why I that's why I like working with them. Yeah, and it's funny to me, and, and everyone buys. It's it's really funny that you brought that up as like when people like start finding stuff out when they get more and more into it. They're like, I feel duped. This is this is bullshit. Like you know, like are you serious? Like you don't have a distillery in in, in Massachusetts. You guys aren't doing this. Or, oh wait, it's in Kentucky. But wait, you guys are where? Like and they just like start like just going in circles, <laughs> and they're like, well, this isn't pure. And it's like, what? Okay, calm down. First of all. And I think that some people will also forget, and I, it takes away a little bit of the, the the magic. But this is a business. Like you're like, if you are just independently wealthy and you want to like come up with these different you know bottles of whiskey that you're like they're all single barrel, and if they sell, they sell. If they don't, they don't. It's like, well, no. Like we're 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 a business. Whatever we're doing, we want to make sure that we like it. It'll sell. The consumer likes it. And by whatever means necessary, because a lot of the times I feel like it is, it's, it's, is it good? Are you going to enjoy it? And when you come out with like a $30 price point, 
You're like, I, I don't. If you guys really, really like this, and this is now your your everyday drinker, this is your cocktail mixer, this is your because you don't have it everywhere right now. So some people like in Ohio might be like, hey, you guys are big whiskey guys, uh, guys or girls. Have you had Wheel Horse? They're like, no, what's that? Now all of a sudden, this is the 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 bottle that you're pouring for all your your whiskey buddies, you know, and the guys or girls are over and they're like, what's that bottle over there? And you're like, oh, that's Wheel Horse. That's their new, like maybe in the next few years, that's their new single barrel. You haven't had that one yet? And all of a sudden it's like, you're blowing people's minds and it's, oh, this single barrel is $50 or $60. It's like, like that would be great. I, I think it's just something that people forget that this yeah. is a business. You're trying it is to a business, sell yeah. it. I mean, as, as, but obviously you have a passion. Your background shows it. You've studied this for a long time. So I think it's I think it's something that you have to find that that good mix. You know, it's not always you're you're trying to get that bottle of of something that's sourced that you didn't pick, but then because you have marketing behind it, because you have a celebrity behind it, now all of a sudden this thirty dollar bottle turned into a sixty dollar bottle because you have to pay a bunch of people. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of sourced products, I mean, if you look at the tequila industry right now and all the yeah. celebrities, I, where do you think they're getting those products from? It's all sourced. Uh you know, Absolutely. especially when you're talking about tequila, but, um, yeah, it, it's a business, but it's a passion business. And I think, uh, you know, the more passionate you are about it, the better, you know, result you're going to get as far as, you know, what you can put out there. And and I think that there are, you know, like I said, at, at the, at the end of the day, I wanted a, 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 a rye and a bourbon that I loved that could be my go-to, uh, on a, on a every day that was priced at the right price point and, and delivered both a, a, something I can drink neat or put in a cocktail. And, and, uh, you know, that, that was the passion play. And it just happened to be that there's also a, a business opportunity there because the, you know, there, there's room for Even a wheel better. horse on the market. I think it's funny that Terry brought up uh chicken cock. Cause I was, I was thinking about, uh, about it with Ray's question about, cause you know, you have some of these big distillers that, they produce a lot of barrels, but they also source for others. And he's like, isn't this just the same thing, but with a different label? Like when, uh, when Greg was talking about when he worked for Wild Turkey, mm -hmm. they had barrels that was the same mash bill, same juice as what was in Wild Turkey 101, but it didn't have the taste profile mm -hmm. for Wild Turkey 101. Yeah. And so it kept sitting there and sitting there All in the rough, rick houses. Yeah, yeah. And that's how eventually it, he came up with the idea for Russell's Reserve. Russell's Reserve does not taste like wild turkey. There are some similarities because they are the same mash bill. It's coming out of the same distiller, but they don't, I mean, people that drink Russell's would not sit there and think that, oh yeah, this is exactly like wild turkey. No, yeah. there, there is a little bit of difference there. Yeah. So just because it's a sourced whiskey doesn't right. mean it's the same bottle yeah. as something else, but with someone else's label on it. Yeah. And, and there are different mash bills too. Like, uh, you exactly. know, um, Owensboro Distilling Company is making multiple mash bills. Uh, Bardstown Bourbon Company, they're doing multiple mash bills. And when you can start from scratch with people and put down fresh barrels, which is what we're starting to do, which is what, you know, Chicken Cock's doing uh, and others are doing, uh, you can you can set some of those parameters uh, the way that, that you really want to, you know, see them. So yeah. th there is opportunity just because we're not building a distillery doesn't mean that we can't, you know, um, decide the path of where wheel horse goes. So that that's the, the we'll, we'll do one more follow up because I do like this with with Ray. He's saying, um, is there any way to tell? And this is his words and I'll, I'll let you answer here. But uh, <laughs> I've got an opinion on it. Is, is there any way to tell what is simply sourced and bottled versus what has a little more heart and soul in it? And, you know, on, on my perspective, it's it's doing a little bit of the research. It, I don't think because he follows up from an on the shelf consumer perspective. I don't I think with marketing and I'm not talking about wheel horse. I, I think that with marketing, you can you can come up. There are some out there that literally you you read the story on the back of the label and then you find out that the entire story is bullshit. Like it's like that. Yeah, that creek that they're talking about. I can think of one off top of my head exist. You know what I mean? So. I think it is. It's listen to, to podcasts, look at, you know, drinkinsider.com or like, you know, blogs like that. It's find sources that you think that either you agree with something like with their knowledge base or you agree with their palates. If you're looking just to try something or you can learn from the, the source like yourself, because you like I, I was the one that brought up the fact that you're talking about Owensboro more than you're talking mm -hmm. about Wheel Horse at one point, because 
that is like where the the first part of the passion comes in and then you have your background terry where it's like your passion comes in and it's like you don't want to put out a product with your label on it that you just sourced and you're like i don't really like it because you you want to put yeah. out a product so i guess i'll let you answer but i wanted to give my two cents is that what what kind of passion are you looking for is it the the family's been doing this for this this long and if that's the case is it the sourcing one or is it the the distillery sto story that they're putting out their own product and they won't source it i think there's passion in a lot of different ways that yeah. is translated and that's that that third third head in the mix or whatever you know you get that that third party in there like yourself and you're like i got my passion I don't have the the base or the source of of doing a distillery myself, so I'm going to go to one of the best that I like, and take and combine the passions. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you know, just the first question about you know how do you tell? Um, I I really believe in authenticity and and telling the the truth, and I I think that a lot of whiskey companies that aren't distilleries have gotten better at this. Again, I mentioned Whistlepig. You know, they had a whole negative blow up that turned into them being more transparent uh redemption i remember redemption uh was very secretive for a long time and then at a certain point they started saying yeah we buy our stuff from mgp uh on their website so i, I do think and i hope that the you know the good uh whiskey producers come from a a, pa a point of passion and are willing to to, sh to be very transparent and authentic about you know how and where they're their whiskeys are being made. I, I believe in that wholeheartedly. And, you know, when I was looking for a distillery uh, to, when we had the idea of Will Horace and we said, you know, where are we going to go? I easily could have gone to MGP, but that was not, you know, where I, I wanted to go. That wasn't the passion. And I, I got really lucky finding, um, you know, Owensboro Distilling Company because for so many reasons, they have a great story. You know, the, the historic yeah. nature of it. Uh, we are basically at the forefront of the return of this distillery to public life, you know, after 130 years and two decades closed up, Will Horses is now a part of the story of Owensboro Distilling Company coming back online, uh, and so that was really exciting to me. The fact that we were we were there at the very beginning and and can be a part of the story. Uh, their their history has just like some some amazing names like like Old Medley and 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 Ezra Brooks and you know these, yeah. these historic brands that that are rooted in Kentucky bourbon culture and and for us to kind of be a part of that was was really important to me and then also you know the 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 idea that I can work with the master distiller uh, and I can I can uh, you know influence where this product goes and they do yeah. care about you know uh, what we're creating together. And they have a stake in it, and 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 so I think you know, the, I think there's a lot of different ways that that brands are being created now. Um, and you got to, I, th I think whiskey. If you're a whiskey drinker, you should be kind of keeping an eye on 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 where your products are coming from because yeah. there's there's different. It is a business, and there's different reasons behind different products. And um, there's a lot, and, and there will be even more brands coming online in the future that are not their own distillery. That's just the, that's just the way that it's going. Yeah. Well, I think it's tough to just be like, you know what, let's start our own distillery. And uh, it's expensive you know, and it takes gonna, time. We gotta buy, yeah. We got we to gotta buy all the materials. We got to buy this. And by the way, at least two years, we're going to be not doing anything. Yeah, we're not going to sell a thing. At least two years. At least, at least two, two years. years. Well, and that's, that's why we see a lot of the, the startup distilleries, uh, selling things like vodkas and yep. gins because they got to do something to recoup cost of yeah. the land, the yeah. building, the materials. And that's what I want to ask also, just kind of as we, as we're kind of rolling through this is the wheel horse name, you know, review of like where that came from for the listeners that are just tuning in, just like a recap of where that came from and also latitude. What other spirits are you guys doing? If any, as Nate just brought up, you know, the vodkas, the gins and stuff like that. I mean, are Latitude doing anything else right now? Yeah, um, I'm actually working on uh, a tequila right now um, nice. that we're going to be launching early next year, like next spring. Um, we're starting with Blanco and then we'll um, kind of expand to Reposado and Anejo. Sure. Um, and, and same kind of story there. We found a partner in uh, Mexico. Obviously, we're not going to start a... Uh, 
tequila distillery. You're not growing um, cactus out in we, uh, agave. agave. We're not Excuse growing me. agave. Uh, so, but we found a small family owned uh, uh, a distillery in, in tequila in Jalisco um, that we really liked their product and um, they weren't working with anybody else in this capacity. So it was a unique partnership again um, where uh, we can collaborate with them. And, and we, we did that one actually took, um, uh, it took even longer to, you know, really collaborate and put together the right batch of, of, um, you know, tequila that we, we like the flavor profile on. Nice. Um, and, uh, is you know, I think, to, is there a name to look uh, for? Do we have a name? Uh, the, the name is uh, tequila Zarpado. Uh, and, um, Zarpado. Zarpado. It's okay. not, uh, it's not out yet. It's not public yet, but it will be out next spring. Yeah, I was just curious for people that are listening now or whatever, just if yeah. they see it on the shelf come, you know, later in the year, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I like how and we are, going. we actually have one other, uh, pro project that I, I, um, I started, uh, and will be on the market actually this December. Uh, it's a project called hunt and gather. And, um, the idea there is, uh, extra matured spirits, uh, that again, you know, we're finding kind of rare barrels, lost batches of, um, you know, the, the first release is a 15 year Kentucky bourbon. Uh, yeah. We were able to uh, secure a very small amount. These are going to be very limited releases, uh, but Hunt and Gather uh, is is going to be on the market December in limited, pretty limited availability. And then Hunt next year, you know, maybe that we'll do a sense. twenty year rum. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that so so that one's all about that. finding really cool stuff and and just bottling it up. Okay. Which and you know, again, that 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 that. that you know, there are other, there are other brands that are doing that. Like uh, barrel bourbon, um, has, or barrel spirits has done a great job with, yep. we had you know, them that on as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, and there's others orphan barrel, uh, is another one that's done some Orphan's nice stuff. the one that I think is more well known. Yeah. You know, the or orphan barrels, the, the name wheel horse again. I mean, where, where are you guys coming from with that? Well, wheel horse, uh, historic. Well, first of all, it's very hard to come up with names this, this day and age. Uh, it's really difficult, but, uh, the, the meaning of wheel horse, I personally love, uh, historically speaking, the wheel horse was the horse closest to the wheel on, uh, like a carriage mm -hmm. and, or, a, a, you know, a car that was driven by horses. And, uh, it was the, the horse that worked the hardest, uh, that was really pulling the load. And it was also historically known as a person who's just a super hard worker, but doesn't ask for any, uh, any praise for the work that they've done. Oh, and I, I really kind of resonated with that mindset and mentality that this is a, an over delivering, hardworking bourbon and rye that, uh, is an everyday, every man price point. Yeah. You put on the, uh, the back and I didn't see it on the. The bourbon. Yeah, the, the first the first rye we told that story a little bit more uh, with the bourbon and moving forward we're telling the story more of of Owensboro Distilling Company. Uh, but I, I like it that says, the, the wheel. It, it says at the bottom, you know, at the top, you say it takes hard work and patience to make a great whiskey, but we think it's worth it. That's what you put at the beginning and at the end of it, at the end of this barrel before or at the end of the bottle uh, label, wheel horse rye. Hard work should be rewarded. I kind of like the saying. I don't know if that's just you know, like you said, you're you're not talking about it as much on the uh, the bourbon. Yeah. But it. Uh, uh, I think you'll you'll settle yeah. in, you know, as you get more into it. Like exactly. You know, what, yeah, we're we're less than a year into this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, anyway, it's you know it's it's a really fun project for me, and I I, I feel good about uh, the whiskey we're putting in the bottle, uh, and um, you know I think there's. A lot of people have said on an Instagram I've seen uh, who have posted bottles like, you know, they, they really like it and they're excited to see what where this goes in the future. Because, you know, these are younger whiskeys that we're putting in here. The oldest is around four years. So um, I'm excited to see where it goes, too, because, uh, you know, a four year, five year as we as we get further into this journey with uh, Owensboro Distilling Company will be um, some some really cool releases to, to put out there. Is, okay. go, go is the plan? Like as you guys do this more and more to produce uh, more aged rye and bourbon, or is it to keep it where it is right now and just keep producing that? And then doing the these, single barrels you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, these will always be the flagship. This was the the whole the whole point was to get these you know uh, this price point, great flavor profile, um, great product at this price point. So these are these are the flagship, and I, I do think they will evolve over time as we get. 
access to more, uh, older barrels, I think they will develop a little bit over time. I like where they're at now and I want to keep that flavor profile, but I think they can get you know, a little bit more developed. Um, but uh, I, I do think that there's an opportunity to, like I said, we're going to, we, we will launch a single barrel program uh, uh, eventually when we can, when we have the barrels to do it. I don't want to do it till I feel like we have great barrels that we can do it with. Uh, and then, you know, from there, I think, I think we will do special releases as we hold on to and age barrels further. Um, but th these two will, will always be kind of the core of what we're doing. I got to tell you, I, I like it. We're going to get into like the cigar briefly while we have you on and, and sure. when we have someone like yourself, you know, we try not, we try to really obviously focus on your time. I got to tell the listeners out there, this is something, and maybe I'm, I'm missing some obvious ones like you brought up like old forester did their rye and all that stuff and and i you look at the the bourbon the whiskey world the spirit world but the whiskey world uh in the last five years especially in my opinion this is a different approach that you got and i can see it from your background why you're doing this um the 50 dollars bottle is like the the 40 to 50 is like the especially in ohio that's your entry level anymore mm -hmm. and if you can find there's two sides of this the 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 staple brands that have been around like old forester like you know just like the 86 proof old forester like we get it here in ohio you know it's like 18 dollars for a fifth and <clears throat> people just pass over it a lot of times you know these are like that that's that budget bottle that they're like ah no it's 18 dollars, 20 bucks like you know it's old forester like yeah i've had it like i'll if i do old forester i'm gonna do one of the the date ones you know what i mean the 1910 if i can find it or all this stuff it's like the, the the direction has shifted and i like the name hearing that story of the wheel horse because you've got this you're going into a market <clears throat> excuse me that has almost overshot itself and then you throw in the secondary market then you throw in the yep. single barrels yep. then you throw in the barrel proofs and every this trend of everything it's like what about that you know that like look at like weller you know what i mean like weller for example from like buffalo trace buffalo trace the price hasn't really gone anywhere mm -hmm. it's still real hot eagle rare is much the same that's that 35 dollar bottle that i just wish i could just walk down to the store and grab another <laughs> bottle of. i say you walk could for a I very long just time finish the other one you know maybe i'll uber down to the store but i say with like wheel horse it's like that's that thirty dollar bottle. That's that price point where you're like, you know, I like it and it's good. It's you know, it's pretty universal. I can drink it neat if I want. I don't feel guilty about you know sharing it or killing a bottle. I don't have much left. You're you're going after a part of this market that is, I think, to to Ray who was asking those questions earlier. It's oversaturated with the the one offs. The the you know, oh, again, bring up the celebrity thing. It's not a bad thing. They're not bad bottles, but it's like, oh, you know, this is. Like Bob Dylan's Heaven's Door. It's like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's 50 bucks. Well, if you didn't know it was Bob Dylan, were you going to buy a $50 bottle? It looks cool. You drink it. You're like, yeah, it's good. But it's and they like, just released a $500 bottle. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, did Bob, does it come with Bob, like a Maybe a Bob like spit song? it or something. I don't know. It's got his DNA in it. I, I'm not quite sure what they no did. No one wants that DNA. <laughs> other than his son Jacob, maybe. But I, I just look at it as like I love the fact that the the strategy here is when you say flagship, when you think flagship, you think the high end, the the most expensive, or like that cream of the crop. The flagship for you is like that's that that blue collar man. That's the anyone yeah. can, can grab this. Yes. And for those I, I guess when lovers, I say flag flagship, I just mean like that. That's really what we're focused on. That's the core of of this portfolio. Always will be. That was the whole idea behind it. As, as somebody who loves whiskey and wants to see where this could go, of course, I'm going to explore and try to see if we could do a five, you know, six year single, you know, a, a barrel proof release down yeah. the road. Maybe we'll try some cask finishes with some some wine casks or something. Of course, I want to try that because well, I want to see where this could go. But this, these, this is what this brand is all about. Will Horse yeah, is about. I, I love that. I love it. I think it's something that that is missing the, the new new kid on the block if you will that comes in with a staple product that that it's affordable you guys hopefully can have the uh the source where you can keep that volume up and everything and keep it consistent i mean I, it's just something that's missing and i think will be something that will will slide into a lot of people where they're like you know it's that's pretty that's pretty good and it's it's an everyday buy it's an everyday sipper and uh i i, I love the strategy I, I will say that um cool Let's let's it, while we have you on, let's just touch briefly on the the Hoya de Monterey, Hoya de Monterey, 
um, is is what we're smoking tonight. It's a, a, a Cuban brand initially, Hoya de Monterey, General Cigars, who they, they own. Um, CAO, Punch, yeah. Partagas, Cohiba, Cohiba Macanudo. Macanudo. Some, some big staple brands, right? You know, our, our, our sponsor, Altidus, behind us there with Monte Cristo, Romeo, Julieta, kind of the, the, the sister company as far as it goes with the, the big boys that have a lot of these historic brands. So Hoya de Monterey, they kind of have really in the last several years, for those that smoke Hoya de Monterey, They've, they've really pushed the Hoya series, almost took away the, the De Monterey. So it's like the Hoya. They're working yeah. with A.J. Fernandez, which is a big, like you talk about sourcing. A.J. Fernandez is a, a major uh, tobacco grower, blender, and everything like that that everyone is, is, is basically sourcing from. Uh, Hoya de Monterey, this Epicure Selection, they really threw it back to the, the Cuban heritage as far as the, the packaging, the name Epicure, they, like Hoya de Monterey, Epicure number two is a, is a very famous uh, blend in size of a Cuban brand of the Hoya de Monterey. So there's a lot of history there, but right there on the box, it says made in Honduras. I mean, this, there's no, that's as far as it goes with this cigar. This is, a, a in my opinion, a medium bodied cigar, and Nate, you can give your, your opinion on it, but um, very classic packaging. I think it might be confusing to some some more novice smokers, um, but I think General Cigars has they, they price point it kind of similar to you guys, right? So you've got this beautiful packaging like in the Wheel Horse bottles here, but this has that very historic name where you have the historic uh, distillery, yep. Yep. and people will look at this, they'll smoke it. I think you're going to like it. It's a Honduran puro. They say that the wrapper leaf is kind of an undisclosed, and so there's a little bit of mystique, but Again, I think there's marketing there. I think this is something that is the reason we picked this cigar tonight, not cracking these bottles prior, though, Terry, is that I knew it was a medium body cigar that may or may not, but most likely wouldn't take away from either bottle. It's yeah, yeah I was going to ask, how, how does it pair? How's the how's it work? Initially, <clears throat> after the week I've had with my <laughs> um, everything else, um, so I, I just got full-blown smell back and everything else so i i didn't really say it earlier in the podcast we we're gonna talk about in the second part here but i actually i did get uh, a positive test result for covid and, and it would like it made sense because last like, week last week but it went back symptom wise two weeks and so yeah um that's why we're you know nate unfortunately had been around me when i didn't know i had covid but it was one of those things like you know sinuses and everything else like when you get sick you're like oh, i can't really smell anything and then you're like wait a second if I can't smell anything, do I have this? And then all of a sudden I had a fever like on Wednesday last week. That's why I wasn't on the podcast. And then I went in on Thursday and sure enough, they're like, yep, no, you've so you got, you got your full, uh, full taste buds back at this point. Taste. I never lost smell. Okay. I did. Just the smell. Smell huh. was one of those things. Like when you're stuffed up, you're like, eh, I can't really smell anything. Yeah. And then I took some Claritin D and I was like, well, I can breathe again, but my smell's not back. You know, I, I seem normal, I guess for being sick. Cause that's the same thing as having a cold, a flu or anything else. But now that it's my smell is back, now I'm like it's like uh, it's almost like being reborn. It's really weird. <laughs> it's really weird. You know, for for people in in our business and in our industry, and for people who love uh, you know whiskey and beer and wine and cigars, that's uh to lose your your ability to smell and or and and or ability to taste. That's uh, obviously COVID has a lot of other major problems that go beyond that but luckily, that, that's... yeah luckily it was i you know i basically yeah. you know it's just like boom the next day thursday i you know i broke the fever overnight on wednesday and then sure enough i was you know basically without symptoms for the last whatever four five six days well, and that's basically they the doctor was like yep no you're good like you don't need to you know that's that's how this works for 99 percent of the people but as i was doing this smoking this cigar with that with the rye, I don't think it matched up as well, and we, we're going to go into the the ratings here, including you on that. But um, I think it, uh, it 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 flowed nicely, the cigar with the two bottles. Yeah, I the for me the the dominating note that I get from this cigar, and uh, it's a little different than the first time I smoked it. I I get this very heavy bread note on a cigar on the cigar, and so like with the rye. Uh, I think the the spice of the rye kind of overpowered the cigar a little bit. Yeah. The more I've drank the bourbon, I get more of the sweetness and less of the spice out of the bourbon. Uh, so I think those two 
pair uh, a little bit better together. The bourbon and the cigar. The bourbon and the yeah, cigar. I'm I, I, yesterday, when Steve and I were in the shop, we both picked out the the same cigar to smoke because it was new to the shop. And Don't Steve, say what it was. I'm not going to say what it was. Steve lit it up before I did, and when he first lit it up, he looked at me and he he's like. I don't, I don't know. I don't know like, if my taste or he, he didn't, he didn't, off. he didn't like the taste of it. So he was worried of, uh, you know, that something was off with his palate. And I was like, all right, let me, let me light it up and see what I get. And I'm like, yeah, no, don't, don't like it. Here's what I get out of it. And there was one, the first note that I said out of that cigar, I, I was like, it, it's, it's like burnt tree bark. It's not. It's not something you put in the brochure either. No, it's not, it's it not you, burnt, mm-hmm. burnt tree bark was what I tasted, and we're both like, yeah, it's not good. And Steve smoked like less than half an inch of the cigar, right. and smoked something else. But then he looks up a, a review site, and one of the we taste, off. We one off. of the tasting notes they said was burnt wood, <laughs> right. and I'm like, yes, <laughs> our it's, taste isn't messed up. Yeah, exactly. it's just not good. But yeah, so the the cigar with this one, the the Hoya de Monterey. Epicure uh, Selection. I think for anyone out there, I think this is something that um, you should give it a shot. I mean, it's in that eight to ten dollar range. So again, you're not, you're not. That's kind of average price. You know, Terry, you say you smoke cigars, but yeah. I don't know how often you smoke or you, what kind of uh, depth you have as far as knowledge base of price points. But eight to eight to ten dollars MSRP. It's it's kind of where where you're at. You know, the thirty to forty dollar bottle. Mm-hmm. It fits for Hoyo. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a good cigar. Um, if you if you like Honduran tobacco or you don't like Honduran tobacco, I will say this for me from a cigar smoker standpoint, this is not what I was expecting when I first lit up this cigar, knowing it was all Honduran tobacco. For better or worse, it's just not your, your typical cigar that I would say this is a Honduran blend. I can get it, but it's not like something that I was fully expecting. Yeah, there, there's a couple brands right off the top of my head that I can think of when I hear Honduran tobacco. Such as Rocky Patel, Christian Aroa. Yeah. Like when I think Honduran cigars, those are the two main brands that I think of. And this cigar tastes very, very different from those. Yeah. And it doesn't even taste like a lot of the Hoyos that I've smoked in the past. Um, I, I remember when we first got into the shop, uh, like sometimes when I'm trying a new cigar, I'll sit there and. Uh, dry draw on the cigar Mm -hmm. so i'll draw through the cigar and even retrohale that even before i light it and see what flavor notes i get out of that cigar and and then i actually lit it up and smoked the cigar the first time i had it i actually liked the flavor of the cigar before i lit it up more than after i lit it up there you go and was actually smoking it Chew uh, on it a while. Yeah, which, you know, that's one of the things that Brian at the Tinderbox does quite a bit is he'll sit there and, and chew on cigars. Uh, I mean, Brian's been in the tobacco industry since he was a teenager. Sure. Um, but he'll sit, he has the ability, he'll sit there and just chew on a cigar and get flavors out of the natural tobacco as it is. Not and, right now. He's He has not had, like, you to your point, Terry, <laughs> he told me today, he's like, I haven't had taste or smell for, like, 30-some days. He took a COVID test, and he was he was negative. He's like, I, I don't, hmm. it was one of those, like, self-administered ones at CVS, too. He's like, I don't know if I did it wrong, but he's like, I'm pretty sure I had it because it's been about a month, and I still don't have my wow. my, my taste and my smell back. And, again, he's been in the industry for forever, so he knows. Um, I did want to th- throw it up here. Uh, Bubba says, is it in Georgia? Dustin commented, he says, the whiskey source from Kentucky, the distillery's in Massachusetts. Again, I think going back to it. Is it available, is it available in Georgia? In Georgia? That's we what know I just commented. From, yeah. um, we are not available in Georgia yet. So okay. No. So we're getting there. The answer is no. I think we're... I think but we're, didn't you we're, say that you that you guys ship it? Like, we do. So, we do. So someone yeah. in Georgia can actually go to your guys' website and... Yeah, we, we and can't ship to every... We can't ship to every... Um, state but there we ship to more states than we distribute to yeah so okay. there's there's a better chance that you'll find it uh on our website wheelhorsewhiskey.com uh and can order it to georgia I, i'm pretty sure you can yeah fantastic yeah all right well while we have you here as we we talked about the cigar briefly again if you guys have any more questions about the hoya de monterey epicure uh, selection please feel free to reach out or uh follow up on the facebook page which is bourbon and bs community page uh, i know there's a lot of 
got about 13 to 1400 members on that currently. And you guys, I know a lot of members out there have smoked this cigar. So uh, that's the whole point of that community page is kind of keep the discussion going from talking about wheel horse, talking about the Hoya de Monterey that we're smoking, um, or obviously the topic in part two. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot just like we like to do here, though, is um, and you can do both. This is where we, we rate the the whiskey, the cigar, and the pairing. Obviously, you can't really do the cigar and the pairing. Uh, <laughs> have you have you smoked certain cigars with either of these bottles, Terry? Uh, I haven't. Uh, you know, I, I, I like cigars. I, I don't smoke them all that often. I would say, you know, maybe once a month. And yeah. uh, I, I mean, my knowledge of uh, drinks goes deep, but my knowledge of cigars is pretty, pretty surface level uh, yeah. to the point where I'm not, uh, I don't think I, I'm personally able to really do a, a pairing uh, analysis. Um, but so how about the whiskey? You know. If you were going to rate the whiskey comfortably oh, on this and, and to Bubba out there, he's asking, do you have a Georgia sales tax number? For Bubba and anyone else out there, I don't want to keep uh, you know going too far into depth, but they can reach out to Wheel Horse Whiskey on social media or the website, right? And they can yes, any, yes, any for state sure. that you guys are in. If you have any questions, actually like on that, our website we do also have like a, a store finder, so you can see if we're in a particular state. Okay, uh, and then yeah, you can also see if we can ship to that state. Yeah, you got to contact us, or yeah, I know that yeah. the the uh, Instagram page is pretty active as well as far as mm -hmm. messaging and everything. Are you in charge of that, or is there someone else in charge of that? I, I started doing it originally, and then I uh, I passed it on to my colleague Kelsey. So she's okay. she's been helping me with it. But we both look at it, yeah. Yeah. So Bubba's <laughs> asking about Georgia sales tax number. Ryan Jones is asking about can you get it in Illinois? Um, Illinois, yes, yes, for sure. We're we're uh, I know that Benny's definitely in, in Chicago area has uh, has us, keeps Benny's. us stocked up as much as they can, and then there's definitely uh, other shops. And Bubba says, if you're shipping to Georgia, you should pay the tax as I do as a brick and mortar retailer. So, Bubba, if you're interested in trying this and it's not in Georgia currently, reach out to uh, Wheel Horse Whiskey on Instagram or on their website. The, I mean, definitely they they're very responsive. And again, this is a newer project, so we appreciate you yeah. listening, Bubba, in Georgia. And if you're a brick and mortar retailer, you know, I think that's something that uh, maybe that's where the connection really starts. If there's enough desire that. Sometimes I know, I don't know about you guys with Wheel Horse, but sometimes that really pushes the, the, the distributor or the, the distiller to really like look at a, a state and it kind of bumps it up in the line of the project. You know, as far as you're, you're getting the reach out there, you're like, well, we're getting a lot of attention down in this state and a lot of interest. So let's, let's kind of bump that above these, these other five states right now. So yeah, we appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. So with this, the, the, the rise, of the original earlier this year, and now the bourbon. Out of 10, do you feel comfortable uh, 10 being the highest? I, I think rating? it's really, really, really hard to, uh, <laughs> to honestly rate your own products. That uh, sucks, doesn't it? I, you know, if I, I've been I've been uh, rating products on uh, whiskey and wine and, and, and beer on, on, on my website com. for a very long time, but I, I would have a hard time doing it. I, I think I could honestly do it, and I think that I would probably – um, be, I, I usually do it on a hundred point scale. I would right. probably be, you know, I, I can't do it. I can't do my own. Oh, come I can't on. Do it. <laughs> so if, if it takes some of the pressure off last week, uh, yeah, we had, I was shocked on that. One. Yeah. Last week we had a guy, uh, again, work for the distillery of the bottle that we were featuring. That was still Austin. It, yeah. Still Austin based in Austin, Texas. And, uh, he went first and he gave their whiskey, uh, a 7.4 and then Dustin was at an eight. I was at like an eight and a half to nine. And he's like, well, sh all right, shit. Now I feel bad. Cause I, ra I rate my, my own stuff. So low. I think, I think he was harder <laughs> on himself than, than other people, which I think a lot of us are when we get into this industry. Right. So I think if I, if I look at what's out on the market in this price point and I compare it and I, 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 I've, I've tasted this side by side with a lot of, uh, products in this price point. And, uh, many times, if not most times, I prefer what we're putting in the bottle. Nice. So in that case, given the $30 or under price point, I would be in the high eighties, low, like to, to 90. Uh, okay. we have received a few, like, um, you know, 94 point ratings and wow. whatever. I, I, you know, I, I, I have a hard time going that high because, you know, listen, this is not, this is not your most like complex and, and, um, you know, super aged whiskeys. This, 
it is what it is. And I think, That's you it. know, a, a 90, 89, 90 for, for, uh, you know, this product, I, I think is a fair, a fair rating, but I don't know where you guys are. You guys might be, I, I try and tend to be generous with my ratings. If you look on my website, uh, yeah. I, I, I never give anybody like, if I don't like it, I'm not going to, first of all, I'm not going to put it up on my website. I, I only do stuff that I, I like, but yeah, you uh, don't want to <laughs> be negative, right? When you're doing, yeah, I, I hate being because, negative. And, yeah. Cause it is, it, it comes back to it. You know, you try to be a, as objective as possible when you're rating stuff, but it always is subjective when it comes to taste and everything else and, and preference and everything. You try to take that out of it, but I, I think it's impossible. As, as, as someone that rates stuff. So, Nate, For uh, sure. how, how about you? With the, the, the whiskey first, cigar second, and the pairing. Uh, and you can do both. The, the rye, because that was the, the, the first one. And then, obviously, the focus now is the, the newly released bourbon. Uh, for both whiskeys, I'm around that eight on both of them. Okay. They're both very different. I, I like them for different reasons. Uh, they're But I, I give it an eight because they're it's solid juice. It's got good flavor to it. Um, there's nothing I don't like uh, about the bottles. I, I think thirty dollars is uh, a great bang for buck uh, on these bottles, and definitely something that if you live in a state that they can ship to, I think it's definitely for thirty bucks. It's definitely worth trying. Yeah, I mean it because also because it's unique. Uh, kind of going to what Ray had asked earlier. Like we've, you know, 145 episodes in, we've drank a lot of different whiskeys, right. not just on the podcast, but also in our life. All right. We've drank a lot of different whiskeys um, and they're, they're both very unique and 145 episodes in that's refreshing to, to drink something sure. that is different doing this for two and a half years. Yeah. Like it's nice to have that. Uh, so I'm I'm an eight on uh, on both bottles. Eight on the whiskeys. Uh, on the cigar, uh, cigar I'm probably a, uh, a a little bit lower. Okay. About a seven and a half on the cigar. I mean it's it's good. It it, it doesn't wow me. Uh, it's not something that uh, even with all the cigars that I have access to, it's not something I find myself going back to yeah. too often. Like I said, I've smoked it before. Because uh, when you work in the retail industry, you, you have to smoke it in order to be able to sell it. Sure. Because you might have someone that comes in who's looking for a particular type of flavor profile on their cigar or a certain price point, And that might be the cigar that hits what they're looking for. Even if it's not something that you personally go back to, the same thing with whiskey. It may not be your palate, but there's someone that might like it. So you should know what it's like. Yeah, you're uh, dancing around the fact that you don't really care for the cigar. It's it's better the <laughs> it's better the second time than it was the first time. How about that? It's yeah. got it's gotten better. It's nice uh, of you to say. It's it's definitely a lot better than the cigar we smoked last night at the shop. Again, just all right, focus. All right. <laughs> um, and the pairing. As as far as the pairing, I think the whiskeys actually I, I think the cigar goes better with the bourbon than the rye. I'm with you. Because I think the spice from the rye overpowers the cigar. And I know I said the, the predominant flavor I got out of the cigar was more of a bread flavor. Drinking it with the rye, it, it tastes like a, a rye or pumpernickel type of bread. <laughs> um, but then I think that bread flavor and then a little bit more sweetness with the bourbon pairs better. Yeah. So... I think with the rye, the pairing's an eight. With the bourbon, it's an eight and a half. Yeah. All right, so the whiskeys, Terry, Terry I, I think, and I, I spoke to it before already, I love the price point. When, when you brought that up, when, when we do the ratings, we have some guests that, that, you know, they try to do this whole blind taste testing, which is what I think everyone thinks happens in the, the publications and the blogs right, right. for whiskeys, yeah. for any spirits, for cigars and everything else. It's like, oh, they took the label off. It's just a blind taste testing. And it's like you take the price yeah. out of it. I I can appreciate that. But as an everyday consumer, I think that's bullshit. I think you need to know. You have to take the drink. price into consideration when you're rating something. Yeah. I think it's silly not to. I mean, uh, yeah. This is not, you're not going to put this up against a $150 whiskey it's, or a no, $90 I think whiskey. It's, I think those are the fun ones when someone has, like, you, you mess with people that are like, oh, I only drink, like, you know, 
certain proof. I only drink this. And you're like, all right, well, here's three plastic cups with one, two, three on it. What do you think of these? And this is one where sometimes they'll be like, well, I really like number three. You're like, well, that's a $30 bottle you never had before. And like, oh, fuck. And then they're just like pissed because they like, all of a sudden but, they like a cheap bottle. But you should put it up against something in that same price point. Like say yeah. a Wild Turkey 101, which is the same proof. So that's where I'm getting with the rating on the whiskeys. I think for, for an everyday whiskey especially, I think on its own, I think you're right. Like the things that you said, Terry, is that, you know, it's not the most complex or the most complicated bottle. There's not the age. It doesn't taste young, either of them. I think the rye tastes like a, a rye that I want to drink. It's it's. I think it does actually your competition here, which no one's trying to compete with for certain sometimes obvious reasons because they already have a lock on the industry. But is that wild turkey type of of area? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I, I mean, asked uh, with the tip of the hat. I think that you guys yeah. are 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 swinging in the same weight class as the other bottles that have been around for a long time. That Bubba said, you know, something that his favorite every day is Woodford Double Oak. Well, that's almost twice the price. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, fifty that's, plus yeah. dollars. Yeah, so that's fifty dollars on our shelf. So now all of a sudden you're you're seventy five percent more expensive. It's if you want to go that and price is no object, yeah, then buy a fifty dollar bottle, do something. That's not really the same type of product that we have here. I think this one is going to compete with a lot of bottles that are in that thir- like twenty to to fifty dollar price point. And, and I think that that's where I would give. The, the rye, for what it is, I'd give it an eight and a half. And the, the bourbon, I don't think I gave it a fair shot because I had the rye first. So I'm interested in trying it on its own. Um, but I think the bourbon is, is, is a smooth drinker. And I'd give it an eight, eight and a half. I think that's what you're looking for here. This is a, for 30 bucks, it's, it, it's not a 10. You know, like this isn't a 10 with a blind taste test. But at the same time, it's that eight, eight to nine. And for $30, if you can get an eight to nine dollar bottle, in my at least in my you know rating my my yeah, preference yeah, yeah. this is a this will be available in my personal bar on a regular basis this is something that i would grab just like i would grab a woodford you know like the woodford reserve not necessarily the double oaked but a normal woodford bottle or a wild wild turkey 101 or the wild turkey rye or uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones that are just really you go to like the Buffalo Trace distillery, you know, this is going to the bourbon I want to try on its own because I'm a huge Eagle Rare fan. And I mean, I know they don't put 10 years on it, but I mean, if, if you can compete with a two right. two some year bottle with a Buffalo Trace around the same price point that in Ohio, like Buffalo Trace doesn't last on the shelf because you still can't get it all the time. So if this was in that yep. same realm. That's where that rating comes from. I mean, I, I think you guys knocked it out of the park. It's not only because you're sitting there, you know, remotely listening to this with us. <laughs> I think this is something that marketing-wise, bottle-wise, what you pour in your glass, the the just overall, I think I think an eight and a half on on something like that is not a negative score. I think this is no, a, no. I a, I appreciate your your eight. your uh, input, and and I think you guys are you know spot on. That's and and me as a whiskey lover, I'm right there too. I I said you know high eights into the low nines nine yeah. uh that's you know i i have a bias because i created this product <laughs> but no. but i think i think if you stack this up against even some some stuff that gets up into the 40 50 dollar price point range uh it it will be right there toe to toe with a lot of them and better than a lot of them uh and so um yeah i i'm i'm pretty excited about uh, about these uh these and first entries in the wheel horse portfolio. Batch number one. I, I look at it. So a lot of the the ones that aren't sourcing it, with your knowledge and what you've 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 kind of, uh, and I, I appreciate we appreciate you you kind of uh, uh, dropping all the knowledge and, and and kind of exposing the 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 like you said transparent side of things. When we look at some of the stuff, especially in Ohio, or you look at like different states that they're like they're they're almost reinventing the wheel of how to do it. Like you're going to a Kentucky distillery that's got history. You're doing the 53 gallon barrels. You're doing the the traditional rick houses. Like this is as true to form as you can get with a rye. Yes, absolutely. Bourbon. There are plenty of fifty dollar bottles on the smaller distillery side in Ohio and, and other places that we've had on the podcast or we've just you know tried. You know, you, you walk into a a liquor store and you're like, all right, I'm gonna buy something I haven't had, and fifty bucks is my limit. You buy it, and then you get home. You're like, "This is corn water. This is literally like this. Like, <laughs> this is. 
I, well, you know, and again, you go, if you go back to the business side of it, there's a reason that a lot of these, you know, small uh, upstart, you know, craft distillers have to put out a sixty dollar, you know, two year product, yeah, uh, or more. It's because they have to pay the bills. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, as as I have al always believed with our, we kind of have a unique business model at latitude that that is built kind of on sourcing and finding great producers and putting it in the bottle and getting it out to the market at at a unbelievable price uh you know we can do that because there's lots of inefficiencies in in the alcohol world uh right. there's uh there's three tiers there's building very expensive distilleries there's buying ingredients there's time with bourbon there's lots of time to get it to where it needs to be and there's lots of expenses so it makes total sense why a lot of you know craft distillers have to price their 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 bottles at you know 50 60 70 dollars plus in some well, they cases they also quit their day jobs and they're trying yeah, to make some money exactly and so we truth, don't we don't have to do that we we don't uh you know our our model is different and i think that provides a, a unique value to whiskey lovers absolutely and 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 not to take away from that i, I do want to finish my ratings the hoya de monterey i i'm in that kind of seven and a half to eight you know on that i think it's a good everyday smoke i think it's if you like honduran tobacco you're gonna love it i think if you don't you're gonna like it um it's not gonna wow you but for an eight to ten dollar cigar if you're looking for something much in the same realm if you're looking for that to be your your new end all be all cigar just like if you're looking at wheel horse your guys is every you know your your staple your flagship products to be your end all be all that'll stack up against a 150 dollar bottle I think you're, you're being too optimistic. You know, we look at like the wine world, two buck Chuck, you know, Charles Shaw with Trader Joe's. The reason that was so successful is that it was $2. I think now it's like three fifty or $4 a bottle. And it's like, <laughs> it's good. It's it, like, you can, you can drink it and not, it doesn't taste like shit. This is way above that on the whiskey side. Yeah. I was going to say, I would, I would hate to compare this to no, that. No, no, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> knowing the wine world uh, even better than the whiskey world. Uh, no, no, I, I didn't mean that, it like that. Yeah, I was just kind of making a comparison <laughs> as far as when you yeah, look for that wow you. factor out of an eight dollar cigar. I think you're you're overshooting. You're trying to you know if you find that great, but it won't last at that price point. And we see that in the whiskey world when something comes out in that twenty to thirty dollar range, and all of a sudden everyone's like, "This is winning awards. This is this is crazy." And everyone's like, the people behind the whiskey are like, "All right." So now we have to actually charge 40 or $50 per bottle. That's where we're at. So I think yeah, the pairing is yeah. good. I agree with Nate. I think the pairing with the cigar and the whiskeys, it stood up to them, but I think it goes better with the bourbon. 100%. So cool. That's where we're at. Anything else uh, for our viewers before we lose you here for the night here, uh, Terry? No, I appreciate you guys having me on. It was it was a lot of fun talking about uh, Wheel Horse and talking to you guys. And um, you know, glad you glad you liked them and glad you saw what we were uh, trying to do with this. And um, you know, like I said, we're we're only a year into this journey with Wheel Horse and with uh, Owensboro Distilling Company. And um, you know, I think there's a lot more to come. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. And, and again, I, I want to throw out a plug for you guys. If anyone is looking for this, check out, you, you said on their website, on your guys' website. Uh, wheelhorsewhiskey.com, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wheelhorsewhiskey.com. Find retailers or find a, you know, a store locator near you. Um, or check if we, you're in a state like Ohio that has a state run or has a, we have OHLQ, which is not available in, in Ohio yet, but you can, you can search locally and see if you can find it, but it's definitely for the $30, it's worth a pickup. Give it a shot, the rye or now the bourbon. Uh, guys, I, I definitely encourage you guys and girls to check this out. Um, and I can tell you for sure that, you know, it's all over the Northeast, uh, down to New York, down to mid Atlantic, uh, out in Illinois, Colorado, California. Uh, so we cover a decent chunk of the country, but, um, you know, like I said, we can ship to others and, and we'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, it's a process Eventually. for those that don't know. Like, it is I a know, process. We're, we're more familiar with Ohio, and, and it's one of the more difficult states to deal with just because it is state-run. So, yeah, um, yeah. so check it out. Um, I, I do want to thank our sponsors for Part 1, Tinderbox at Easton for the Hoya de Monterey uh, Epicure Selection. Um, like I said, we just kind of briefly went over it just because we're a little more whiskey-heavy tonight. Uh, also, Altidus USA, which is our cigar sponsor for the second part. We've got the Monte Cristo Espada, which is a Nicaraguan Puro coming out of the Placencia uh, factory and farms, which we love that cigar and love that factory and that, those farms. Uh, but they got great cigars, Monte Cristo, including Romeo Julieta, H. Upman, Butera, and countless others. 
And then also BS Cigar Company. Again, the silver's available. The gold's still available. Check them out, BS Cigar Company, on Instagram, social media, Facebook. And also you can get that through our other sponsor, Tinderbox at Easton. And then obviously uh, I do want to throw up there the Patreon.com. We, every week it seems we get one more patron, and it's, it's fantastic. Um, now that I am over my sickness. <laughs> you can go to the post office? I can go to the post office. All right. Trying to keep everyone safe. Uh, but we did get it one out to Sean in California. We got a, a shirt, and then he also ordered. Uh, I love that with this type of a, a community that we have, Terry, is that, um, you know, Sean is a listener out in California. He not only supported the podcast, but then, again, that synergy I was telling you before the, the, the episode, he was like, well, while I'm at it, I need to order some BS Golds, and I need to order some other things, and I need a Boveda pack, and I need a lighter, and I'm like... So you're shopping local, but from California to Ohio. So we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> we need that. So patreon.com slash bourbon BS podcast. Pretty easy to donate uh, or contribute and uh, working on more and more swag here going forward. So with that being said, uh, end of part one for uh, episode 145. For those that are listening and uh, hanging out tonight, stay tuned on Facebook and YouTube live. We're going to get into part two. Uh, now what is the, the topic? Yeah. And uh, Terry, thank you so much. Hey, thank thanks, guys. I appreciate horse. it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Cheers. Enjoy. Talk to you later. And he's out. Bubba, you're down in, uh, if you're still listening, down in Georgia. This is where we do a little uh, intermission here. I don't know if you've listened, listened before. That's the garage door. But... Uh, Great having you on. I, I hope you do check it out. Um, I will say I, I did enjoy it. I really did. And Dustin, uh, we hope you feel better. Dustin's at home uh, tonight, uh, also dealing with uh, COVID. Don't know if it was uh, – I didn't see him for about two weeks, so maybe we got it at the same time. Maybe we got it elsewhere. We don't know. But we hope everyone's safe out there and uh, taking care of themselves with all that. We're going to get into that a little bit in part two here. Anyone out there, uh, share it, like it, review it, let us know. Join the uh, Bourbon and BS community page as well. Like the, the Facebook page, the uh, Instagram page, all that good stuff. We're really happy with uh, everyone listening and enjoying it. it. Sounds like we're in round two for everything right now with COVID. And now the election's over. Now it's winter. They canceled Thanksgiving, all that good stuff. So... Hope you guys are, are keeping your head up and, and, and really, I don't know, enjoying some cigars, some whiskey, enjoying podcasts like this. You guys have any questions for us about the part one? Or uh, obviously, if you guys want to contribute, the, uh, the, the part two tonight where we get beyond the BS is, is now what? And uh, it's not necessarily what you might be thinking, which it's like, here, you can leave that open. I'm going to hit that. Um, but you know, when I put that down, I was starting to type it in and talking to Nate about it. And now what? I think sometimes the, the attitude might be like, oh, great. Now what? But that's not really <laughs> what I was going to get into. So I'm going to excuse myself, hit the, the head here in intermission, and then we'll get started part two. Nate, welcome back. Yeah, thanks. Woo. I, f I feel better. No, uh, I think it's interesting uh, seeing the difference between uh, these two bottles, which, as we talked about, you know, were two plus years old, uh, and then the bottle that we had last week uh, from Still Austin, also a, a two plus year old bourbon. You know, obviously they're going to be different. One's coming out of Kentucky, one's coming out of Texas, but then also the Still Austin. Uh, their aging process, they do something a little bit different than what uh, a lot of traditional uh, distillers do, and uh, they they taste very very different. Even though the, the mash bill's not uh, super far off, you know, last week you had seventy percent corn, twenty five percent rye. This one you have seventy percent corn, twenty one percent rye. Uh, both you know that two plus two and a half three year mark. Uh, they both taste completely different. Uh, they both have their, uh, uh, you know, their own attributes. So <laughs> it, it is a little cold out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, uh, 
<laughs> Steve's just standing in front of the the uh, propane heater. <laughs> Ding. Fries are done. Put my hat on again. Oh, you put yours on. I did. <laughs> yeah, you're not even bald. I, uh, I'm not. Well, I mean, I'm not bald, but my hair is short. Uh, I got a longer beard than you do, though. Yep, you do. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, before we get started, yeah, Ray Cheshire says, the election's over? Nah, not technically. Yeah. We can't vote anymore. Yeah. Put it <laughs> Voting's over. Yeah, let's put it that way. What's everyone uh, drinking, smoking, all that good stuff? Todd, that's who uh, dinged on the computer there. He, Todd Bost sent me something. Todd, uh, write it in. I can't look at it right now. But, uh, <laughs> let us know what you are. As long as it's something appropriate for uh, <laughs> the comments. No, it's glad. Good to, good to hear and see that you're feeling better, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, and we can talk about that briefly here. Uh, get into it. Todd, I looked at your, your message, your picture message. I have no idea what you're smoking. <laughs> if you have, <laughs> I like this Bubba Rosenthal. I don't, I, maybe I missed that name before. Maybe that was last week, or I don't know if he's he's tuned in in the past. But he says, uh, if, you have an, if you have over a four-hour election, you should call a doctor. No shit. <laughs> no shit. We're sick of it, too. Yeah. Which I mean that that kind of uh, goes into what we talked about last week and is kind of a catalyst uh, for what we're talking about tonight. You know, now what? You know, it's kind of a little bit of care. Last last week was uh, can't we all just get along? And I kind of brought that up because of everything that had been going on mm -hmm. uh, since the previous episode. Because yeah. uh, when we had Tom Baker on, like it was all still fresh. We still didn't know what exactly was happening. And then last week's episode, it's like, all right, you know, it looks like this is how it's going to be. So, <coughs> like, we just got to get back to being people, being a community, being a country, uh, you know, quit hating everybody who's on the other side of you. Yeah. And so now that's kind of what that is. Like, all right, you know, where do we go from here kind of thing. Ray says last week was really good. I agree completely. What do you want to pour? You want to pour another rye? You want to pour another bourbon? Bourbon. Bourbon. All right. I'm going to pour one. I'll get started here. Ray, I'm sorry you have to deal with me this week. I appreciate you tuning in still, even though you saw my, <laughs> my face and heard my voice. Well, and, and, hopefully and, we can. I know we don't have Shannon or Dustin here, but uh, hopefully we can we can do it. I like the episode. I thought you guys did a fantastic job. Well, I, I know I know Ray wa was happy that uh, – so so last week I was manning not only the, uh, the soundboard, but I was also manning the mouse and – the stream yard feed and the comments and everything. And, and I knew because what you guys don't see on the podcast is Steve has this ability that as we're doing an episode, Steve doesn't necessarily have a notebook that he's writing stuff down in, but he knows where he wants the episode to go and how to direct it and steer it and, you know, point it to where uh, the episode needs to go. The topic of conversation needs to go for better or worse. For, for, okay. For better or worse. Your words, not mine. Uh -huh. Um, and Steve does a better job at that than myself or Dustin. I thought you did a great job. And so last week, I wanted to lean a little bit more on uh, the comments, people that were commenting, because we didn't have you, Steve. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why last week I was bringing up uh, a lot more comments from the feed, uh, because I wanted to try and bring some of them in to, to kind of bridge that gap between, uh, you know, having Steve, not having Steve. Um, so that, uh, like I, I said, glad, glad to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm manning the other side of the equipment. Yes, yes. I, S Steve looked at uh, how much was left of the bottle from last week, and there's still like half a bottle. And he's like, is that all you guys drank? I'm like, I had a couple pours. But uh, <laughs> I was working. I was yeah. I, I was I was focused on you know running the episode, and uh, he's like, yeah, kind of hard to drink when you're doing all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, but you have no problem. Uh, <laughs> it's called thinking on your feet. <laughs> all right, let's get, let's get into this. All right, uh, we still got a good feed right now. Knock on wood. 
That's not wood. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS Podcast. This is episode 145, part two. And uh, got it? There you go. Very, very tight cork. <laughs> right. Um, this is Beyond the BS. This is where we get into the, the second part. So for those that are, are tuning in live right now um, or clicked on the, the audio and are expecting more about the bourbon and whiskey and cigars, then this is, it includes that. This is where we kind of have the later in the evening type of conversation where we have, you figure out life a little bit. So this is where hopefully we can look at uh, you guys to the audience again as well that are listening live on Facebook or YouTube. Um, share it, like it, get people involved. This is where we really enjoy the, the second half of the, the program. So tonight I do want to thank our sponsors for uh, episode 145 part two, which is uh, Tinderbox at Easton. We smoked the Hoya de Monterey Epicure Selection, the first part. We did review it towards the very end of the, the, the podcast. So check that out, if you will. It was a little more whiskey heavy because we had uh, Terry Lozoff on uh, from uh, Wheel Horse. And the rye and the bourbon they sent us, and we we're very, very gracious and thankful that we were able to uh, sample those. Hopefully, both we'll, batch one, both batch one. So this is a newer project, and uh, we definitely talked more in depth in part. Check that out if you guys have not heard of or didn't hear what we had to say about the Wheel Horse whiskeys. Also, I, I do want to encourage. We had a lot of people towards the end also asking about: Is it available here? Is it available there? All that stuff. Wheelhorsewhiskey.com or check them out on Instagram. That's who, who I was communicating with. I think Facebook is also has, has a presence, but uh, on the, the Instagram page, I know if you message them, they have people, you know, Terry as well as he had someone else that is now kind of manning that, uh, and they can definitely help you out. You can order on their website. They can help you out if you're looking for any other information on it or trying to get into your state, especially if you are involved in that part of the, uh, the industry. So check that out. Uh, what else? We got uh, Altidus USA. I just lit up the Monte Cristo Espada. Great uh, medium body cigar, in my opinion. Check that one out. Uh, it's Placencia Tobacco, which is a family in uh, Nicaragua. Uh, and this is coming out of the Nicaraguan factory. This is uh, all Nicaraguan tobacco. One of our, I'd say one of our favorites in the, the portfolio for, for Monte Cristo. Yeah, uh, for medium <clears throat> for medium body yeah. from Monte Cristo. Yeah, this would definitely be uh, one of my favorites. I think the Oscuro version of this that we had last week would be you know that next step up. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to smoke that with you guys. Yeah, um, and then I mean, but you still have the classic and white series that are their core and staple. That's their oh, yeah. brother. That's that's what they pay their bills with. <clears throat> that's absolutely right. Uh, what else? Uh, BS Cigar Company. Uh, check them out. The gold and silver. The golds are hopefully being replenished here soon. Uh, I know that is uh, part of a production thing with, with the COVID and everything else. It's just like everything right now is, is just a little different. So uh, silver is available. That's what I have on the table here is a silver Toro. That's coming out of the uh, La Zona factory with Eric Espinosa. Uh, but BS Cigar Company. Check them out. And patreon.com slash bird and BS podcast. Again, patreon.com slash bourbon and bs podcast you guys uh can can get some swag you can support us and everything else i'm glad we have a good feed going still here tonight we were hoping it stays that way keep looking over i hope i keep looking a little more blurry but i think it's a lot of a lot of excitement from uh some of our newer patrons yeah ian and and uh, sean and and uh, austin. austin yeah yeah absolutely guys thank you very much we're working on that yeah we uh, should we should some stuff. uh we should try and get austin on uh I, you know, Prior so, to what we were talking about so for next year. Like. One, one of the things, I'd like to get him on. He's actually working on something uh, with us and for us. But mm -hmm. I, I will say that I, I do want, and hopefully this sounds good. I'm looking over at the, the board. I know we had some issues when we had a guest that we were louder or not. So give us some feedback if you can hear us or not. Um, I do want to do our first one. Now that we have some $25 a month patrons, it do a, a Zoom or a StreamYard call. Mm -hmm. So we got to get together with, with you and uh, Nate and Dustin. And uh, maybe we can get uh, Eric Espinosa or someone on there as well, yeah. And uh, get a, a monthly call going, just a little mobile smoke and, and drink. So, yeah, be nice to do. Um, now what? <laughs> it's the top the topic tonight. Oh, is that what? okay? <laughs> no, I. <laughs> no. All right, so no. you guys had a great conversation last week. Um, can we all just get along? 
now we have on the feed if you go if you're looking down Ian who is a patron says uh this is Ian he's on Mackenzie's account right now so <laughs> looks like he hijacked his uh his wife's um iPad <laughs> anyways now what um you guys had this great conversation last week about can't we all just get along and and you even told me that you know part of the things I w- I was experiencing kind of influence that and and not have me on and it might, might be for the best it's just it's been a very very stressful for everyone year and i yeah. think it i think it it kind of kind of came to a, a head obviously mm-hmm. with the the u.s election on a federal level um and I, I think that I, I, when I was listening to you guys talking about it, and you know, like then you had uh, Ann Dimmick who was asking questions like, you know, have you lost any friends yeah. throughout all this stuff? And I don't think it was just the election. I think everyone's been like, you know, that was the other thing for this week we were talking about is that everyone's a fucking expert. You know what I mean? I think this is it's shown in this last year is that everyone seems to have an opinion, especially the vocal people. They have an opinion that they want to tell you about. And uh, sometimes it comes across as you're wrong and here's why. Um, so I think you guys had a great, great talk about that. The now what side of it is, is for me, it's not only what all that led up to, but now last week we talked about it at the end of, of part one that, that I, was, uh, I got tested positive for COVID. Um, you were around me when I probably had the symptoms and had COVID. So hopefully, you know, we, we, we talked about that tonight. We're, we're sitting a little further apart tonight, but we're not doing six foot. We, we've been around each other. Um, Nate is, is well aware of it. We're, we're trying to not be around other people as much as we can. I'm, I'm in the clear according to CDC guidelines and what my doctor said, which is nice. Liz tested negative yesterday, even though we were, you know, we shared the same house and bedroom and bed and everything else, you know, like we did not socially distant and you can take that for what it's worth. <laughs> well i mean and, no you and i what talked about at? like you know i haven't i haven't had uh i haven't had any symptoms ever since uh last week when uh you started to feel under the weather like i've taken my temperature multiple times a day yeah. every day you know i've i've never ran above 98.1 um you know i i had my temperature checked before i even left the house you know yeah, so I t- I, yeah i checked it before yeah, I mean, you so, on. yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable even being, you know, this close to you. <laughs> I, yeah, so that was the whole thing. It's like, you know, so, you know, when I, when I, when I, so last Wednesday when I wasn't on, we didn't want to alarm anyone. Um, that's why, you know, and I did have a little bit of a cough, right? So I didn't think I'd be able to get through it. I might have a cough. Like, it's one of those things. You get sick, and then all of a sudden, it's now you have a cough for a fucking month. Anytime you have a cold or a flu or anything like that, this is not a new aspect of getting sick. Yeah. Is that you have these lingering effects now? Um, so I didn't want to get on last week, and I, I, I am again thankful that, that that Nate and Dustin and then Shannon came on. You guys involved the crowd, which is fantastic. Uh, but that night, I actually had a, a temperature that, that I think the highest I I I, I scored <laughs> <laughs> was a hundred and two point six. Okay. But I broke, I sweat my ass off overnight, <laughs> sweat through one half of the pillow, and then I flipped it over, and then I woke up again like two hours later and sweat through that part. But, you know, overnight, I, the fever broke and, and um, went on Thursday, got tested, felt better, didn't really have, I think I had 99-some degree temp, so it wasn't anything extraordinary, and uh, went in. It, it's it's interesting. Everyone has talked about it or knew someone. Some of our listeners may have have had it. I'm not making light of it. Um, you're the you're the first person I've known firsthand, really, that uh, tested positive for it. Well, so that's that's part of it. So that's the the like that now what it was it was all right. So I can't take it lightly. I haven't taken it lightly. I've had my opinion of of how we as a world and as a country have have reacted to it, and I can appreciate the the caution. I can appreciate the unknown and everything like that. But it was it was interesting to me, and and I'm sure I'll get some some flack even that that I'm maybe talking about it like this. But it's like so I had a fever. 
I, I had a little worry because it is still the fear of the unknown that like, all right, so and I didn't have much smell earlier in the week, but I thought it was just because I was stuffed up late the week before. Mm -hmm. And when <laughs> truth be told on Wednesday, when I started like not feeling all that great and I felt like I was like, oh, I got a little chills. I got, you know, after, after I went to work, you know, I, I, I before the podcast, I'm sitting on the patio at Fado and it had dropped 25 degrees to like 50 degrees. And I'm like, man, it's, it's, it's fucking cold out here. <laughs> Starting to get the chills and everything like that. I thought it was because we had a, we, we and I, I drank more than you, but I, I, the Jim Beam Black the night before when we were guests on uh, uh, <laughs> the Great Lake Smoke Show. Great Lake Smoke Show. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm just fucking hungover. And that's why I got chills. Uh, so, but anyways, once my, my temperature hit 102 or whatever, I was like, I need to, I need to go get tested, do the responsible thing. And sure enough, it came back positive. I went to urgent care. But it was really interesting because everyone's like, oh, God, like, you know, you should have gotten tested earlier. Or why didn't you get tested earlier? Or, or whatever. What are you going to do now? And I don't know if anyone out there has been tested or experienced this. And, and again, I, I luckily call it a milder case or me being younger, 40, but younger, being in more or less good health. I take my vitamins. I, I try to get as much rest as possible. Drink my whiskey. Um, <laughs> Call it all part of my vitamin regimen. <laughs> but, you know, I take uh, five to now I'm back up to 10,000 IUs uh, a day of vitamin D3. I take my multivitamin, which is a, a, a more advanced multivitamin. It's not just your Centrum or, or whatever, one, one a day. But believe it or not, the, the doctor came in and uh, he started talking to me about, you know, well, how you feeling? You're a smoker. You said you drink all this stuff. I'm like, yeah. I was like, hey, doc, I got to ask you, did you get my test? Because I did a rapid test. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah no, you, you tested positive. And I was like, oh, fucking great. Perfect. And he's like, yeah, I know, it sucks. But that was like the, the, the extent of it. He's like, well, are you you're feeling better? You don't have a fever? I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. And he's like, well, then keep taking vitamin D3. I said, I do that. Take zinc. I said, I do that. He started talking about like the baby aspirin just for heart and overall. He's like, your age and you take testosterone, so I don't want to see any blood, blood clots or anything like that. And. But it was like, that was it. He's like, if you're feeling better, then here's your, your form. Ten days since the first symptoms. When did you start having it? I said, well, I think like it was like the fifth. So it was like a Thursday. I started getting stuffed up. He's like, those were probably the first symptoms. Ten days. And then uh, also th and three days where you don't have any fever or any new symptoms or reoccurring symptoms. And I said, all right. So I called Brian, my employer, and I told him, I said, this sucks, but this is what we got to do. I can't be in retail. And if, if someone, you know, comes in the store, even with masks and everything else, it was kind of like one of those things where that was part of this whole thing of now what? It's, it's I got a, a test positive, so now I got to take care of myself. Doc, or, Doc was like, well, if you walk from here to here, and it was like 15 feet, 20 feet, and you're short of breath, come back and see us at urgent care or go to the hospital or see your doctor because things could be getting worse. Okay. He said, but odds are if you're with the 99% or whatever, he's like, you'll probably be fine in, in a few days. Me, now what? I come home, I tell Liz, and she's frustrated because, you know, she's in the serving industry along with college and everything else and her family, her parents, and she was, you know, so she's worried about it. So it's affecting everyone. But, you know, the mentality was, all right, so I, I, I got test positive. Now what? Start, start rattling. Like, we got we to gotta deal with it. If it came back negative, it would have been a lot easier. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, you're just sick. And we just treat it like we always do. But that wasn't the case. So I, I, I look at the now what. Now I got to tell you, Nate, that, hey, I tested positive. Tell Dustin, who now has since tested positive as well, but he feels okay. But now he's got to take off work. Um, it's that whole thing. We see these cases spiking, and I'm not going to talk about COVID the whole night, but it's it's everyone's like freaking out again. Like everyone needs to lock it down and everything. I was like, I'm of the majority, vast, vast, vast majority, that I got I got symptoms, figured out that it wasn't something else, tested, tested positive. Now, as we always should and we don't, I got to stay clear from work and other people while I know that I have this and take care of myself 
and minimize exposure, whether it be COVID-19, whether it be the flu, whatever it is, you know, my mom dropped off uh, my grandma's recipe of hamburger soup, and she's like, well, I can bring it up to the door. I was like, Mom, you're 73. Like, just drop it at the door, and I'll wave to you. You know what I mean? And so now it's like, now what? She even feels more comfortable with the fact. She's like, well, now that you have it, like in a week or so, I, I don't feel as bad being around you. I was like, well, we still want to do the same things we've been doing the last several months. But, yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> like, maybe I can give you a hug for the first time in fucking, like, nine months. <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't know. It, it's just you just you, you deal with it, you know, like getting diagnosed with with positive tests on that. Everyone thought that it was like, oh, God, how did he get it? Like everyone from some of the stories you told me, like everyone else seemed more worried about you than even you did. I wasn't so yeah because I knew how I was feeling and if it got worse or whatever it is. But it's like it, it was almost like I compared. And I think I told you, Nate. It was <laughs> like. I got tested positive, and all of a sudden, it's like that, that old school, like I'm being treated like a leper, you know? <laughs> or, or they're like, oh, like their text, you know, Liz was getting texts from some of her coworkers and some of our friends, and she's like, they're asking like, oh, why didn't you get tested sooner? And I'm like, look, it's not a fucking STD. Like, I didn't like go like sleep around a bunch of people, <laughs> and I caught COVID. Like, and again, I'm not trying to make light of this, but it's like, this is it's a virus. The virus is going to do what a virus does. So shutting it down, it just delays it. All this stuff that they're trying to do, it's for the best interest of everyone. But <laughs> again, it's like I didn't do anything other than I did go to work, wore a mask around people. We did the podcast. I hung out in small groups, minimized the exposure the best I could. And as soon as I knew that I had it or I was feeling bad, locked it down myself. I think that this, you know, not not gonna say any names but i know other people that are like hey i don't i don't feel good i don't do this and i'm like well or they're they're around someone so like i had people that were in contact with me that they were just saying you know well i can't be around you and i'm like well did you get tested and they're like well no i'm not gonna get tested i'm like well what the fuck man you know you had contact with me and if you're that worried about it go get tested that's how this works but they don't think that there's no there's no logic train so that's that what now mentality or now what mentality is like once you know certain knowledge of something like this you need to follow your own train of logic for better or worse but follow it all the way through don't just pick and choose come up with a plan of action take care of it and then as i feel like i luckily at this point am is that i am 100 percent back to normal i i recovered and my body has been exposed to it, and now we're here. We are. It, it, it's funny. While you were telling your story, my wife texted me, and uh, I asked her to kind of explain a little bit. But uh, she said, uh, "You telling your story with it, it uh, it felt like the early conversation. Don't take this the wrong way. All right, here we uh, go. But the early conversation. Jess, happy birthday, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Um, but not you. when AIDS first came about like no one knew what it was no one knew how it was uh transmitted yeah but like if you got diagnosed like no one wanted to be within like 10 feet of you they, yeah they were like Cause, saying cause, that you could get it through like a toilet seat yeah <laughs> like i'm like, not gonna use a public restroom because of aids yeah and like <laughs> <laughs> uh or like when when magic johnson got tested positive for hiv you know, it's like, all right, well, you, you can't play basketball anymore. Why? Because you think I'm going to get it from my... Well, that was because... A little bit different. That's yeah, contact blah, sport, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, she, she's like just talking about getting tested sooner and people discussing what you're going to do now that you have it and, and et cetera. Well, so that was the whole thing. And again, I, this is just a, a personal thing. So the now what, it's it's come up and listen to the experts. like, And that's the whole thing is that... With something like this, as, as a lot of things, we listen to what we consider experts, but it's through the news, it's through social media. When, when, when what I'm, did you do, though, to when I'm recover? Talk, yeah, took time off work. Luckily, I was able to. Uh, kept up my vitamin regimen. Uh, rested. I binged Stranger Things for the first time, which I... I, I don't think that's going to account to people recovering. You keep occupied so you don't go fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I no. took the dog for the walk. No, but I, 
You, it, you took rest. You took care I of yourself. Did. You rested. You stayed hydrated. You took your vitamins. You did everything else like you normally do. You just you rested. You stayed away from other people. So yeah, so like, so just like you would do to, if, to if, your point. Yeah, I, I maybe upped it a little bit up my rest. I I, I wasn't out and about. I, I I limited my exposure to people. But that is something that I was fortunate enough to do that I work for a company that that says, yep, that that's what we have to do. And whatever your doctor says, that's what we got to do. It was the same thing as if you'd gone on vacation. Yes, but I also understand. So like that was the other thing is that like Liz on the other side is she has a now what now that I have been exposed to it and we live together. Now she's going to be around people. Well, her employer is like, well, you need to get tested, understandably so. But when she tried to get tested, her first call, and that, that was the other thing with this stuff. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but it's not, for me, it wasn't easy. Like, I'm, I'm waking up on Thursday. I'm like, all right, I got a call. I want to get a rapid test. Well, now all of a sudden I called uh, a couple urgent cares. The one that I know does it. I'm on hold for 30 minutes. They're booked up until Saturday, so it's two days full, two days later. So then I'm like, all right. So then I'm like trying to get to CVS to do one. They're booked up. Uh, trying to like figure out, I don't want to get, you know, bent over on charges for, for, you know, taking a test. Everyone's like, oh, it's free. I'm like, it's not <laughs> like my rapid test that I found. So I, I go to an urgent care. The guy's got his head up his ass. I call, I, I check in online, it's down the street, 1130 appointment, pull up, call. Yeah. Just come in. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. I got 1130. I'm out in the parking lot. They're like, yeah, just come on in. It's just, you know, whatever. So I let someone in before me cause I'm a gentleman. They sign in, they sit down, I go to sign in, and he's like, hey, can you come back in an hour? I'm like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, we're all booked up, we don't have more chairs left. I'm like, well, I just, I literally just called you from the parking lot. He's like, oh, that was you? Yeah, I say, hey, sir, you guys are gonna have to swap. I'm like, wait, what's going on? And I'm like, so, he's like, well, yeah, so if you wanna sign in, you can go outside and wait. I'm like, and are you gonna come get me? Do you need my ID? He's like, oh yeah, uh, just kinda see when there's a chair open. I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> And then I got a call from the, the Scioto Urgent Care. Hey, we got an opening at 1.30. I'm like, perfect. Went inside, scratched my name off. I'm like, I'm fucking out of here. And uh, <laughs> went and I paid 150 bucks for a test. One of the things when you were telling me your story about you, you, uh, you overheard someone else calling in. Oh, God. Yeah, so there I am in Scioto, <laughs> right? So Sorry, we're going off on this. This is obviously something. It's still tip of the tongue type stuff here. But it's funny. Like I'm, I'm like, I go into this, this urgent care and they're, they got two people at the counter, you know, check in. It's like a normal, not this one dude that just like, looks like he's just like bothered by me being there. I'm like, all right, this is welcome. So I'm filling out my forms and everything like that. And I told him like, why, you know, this is what my symptoms are. I had a fever less, blah, 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 blah. As I'm sitting there, I'm hearing this lady on the phone and she's like, okay, yeah. why did you want to get tested? Uh, are you traveling? Have you been exposed to it? Do you have any symptoms? And I'm like filling out my form and she's like, no, I understand, but why did you want to get tested today? Was it because you are traveling? Have you been exposed to someone? And she's not like being smart ass about it. She's just like, do you have any symptoms? So you just want to get tested. Okay, our first available is Tuesday, but we, we don't want to have people getting tested if they don't have any of the following things. So you had people wanting to get tested even though they had no symptoms, weren't around people. Which I understand people are, you know, in this, you know, again, I'm, I'm not an expert. I just, I've gone through my side of it and I know there's people that had a lot, way worse than I have, but it's like, <laughs> I walk back up with my paperwork. And I'm like, <laughs> I got to ask, I wasn't trying to over, you know, overhear this or, you know, eavesdrop, but like how often do you get people that just want to get tested, get tested that have no reason to. And they're, they're, I'm talking to this lady, the other lady right next to her. She's like, you have no idea. I was like, <laughs> but that's part of it and, and and i think if people want to get tested they can do that i think but it's that's part of the the other aspect of it is like you know the the news and everything it's they don't talk about you know me where it's like yeah i had these symptoms I oh you're a stat for people. sure i'm a stat but they don't talk about the fact that it's like yeah no i had a fever and now it's i got sick and fortunately i didn't have it escalate and as soon as I knew I had it, I backed out of society, not backed out of society in March and say, oh, you need to lock it down. 
because everyone should work from home. Also, by the way, I need my Amazon Prime. <laughs> it's yeah. The now what part of it for me is is you, you, where do we go from here? Yeah. Same thing with the election. Yeah. Like it, it happened. Ray said, "Oh, the election's over." Yeah. Well, we can't vote anymore. But you guys said, "Can't we all get along?" It, it, there, there's still not going to happen. Like there's still, you know, lingering effects from stuff. You know, whether it be you getting a uh, COVID test, whether it be the election, any any life event. Like there's still uh, things that happen because of that. There's still you know, a, a new path. Well, so yeah, you, I think you need to, you, you take the results, right? So let's talk about COVID, talk about the election. You talk about, you go for a job and you don't get it. You go for a job, you do get it. You, um, we talk, you know, we talk about on the, the relationship side, you know, something happens. Um, you're not trying to, but you, all of a sudden you and a significant other are pregnant. You make decisions, and I, I don't necessarily want to get into like the pro-choice, pro-life thing, but it's like you, 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 you discuss it. You look at your options. You, you, you start, you start knocking through it, right? You, you plow through it. You start looking forward. You start looking forward because, to to your, I guess your your point and your question, like that's what I've seen with with this election is that I am I am one that uh, votes. Voted a certain way, had my own opinion on COVID on the other side of it. Now that that reality is is continuing to to take place, we have this linear linear history happening around us all the time. Now it's I'm not done. Like so so the way I voted, I even said I don't think I could have voted the same way a week and a half later because I saw the after effect. You know, like I saw how this did it. My viewpoint had changed slightly and I'm willing to take an, uh, an L in certain arenas so that we can have a win elsewhere. I don't think that this last year was healthy. And I'll keep it at this last year. It is not, a, it, especially I know Ray, if he's still listening, but like, you know, other people in other countries, they see it too. And they're, they're, they're not healthy either. I mean, there's a lot like there's this, no one knew how to deal with this shit and it was exposed and then you throw in, you know, our our world leader, and it's like a lot of pros to some, uh, a lot of negatives to some. And, and I look at it as like I learned a lot, and I learned a lot from people that that voted both ways, you know, with with this stuff. And that's where now I'm ready to to continue the conversation based on where we're at. And I'm going to learn some stuff, and I hope that other people do. I don't think that everyone does. I don't think that, you know, the now what thing is, is that people get stuck. Like, with the, like take it away from the politics. I still talk to people that are utilizing their same viewpoint of, say, COVID response from April. Okay. Like, they just, like, they still think that everyone should just stay home. And you're like, till when? And they, there's no fucking response. They, they're like, just until we're until it's gone. And you're like, yeah. what's gone? Yeah. Like, stay home till it's safe. Well, it's it's never gonna be safe. Like, what your definition of safe is? Like, there's always shit out there. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I so I remember someone had said, uh, you know, if uh, if they get tested, you know, can I can I sue the president? It's like, well, if that's the way, or if I test positive, can I sue the president? President, just, just stay the fucking home. President MD. Like, okay, okay, fine. Then, then wait till someone's in office that you like, and then you go out. And if you get it, then what? You're gonna sue that guy, or you're gonna sue the previous one? Like, my whole thing when when I hear, uh, you know, when I was think when we were talking about this last night, um, one of the analogies that that popped in my head uh, was was football because you know like I, said, I, I used to play football when I was when I was in high school and college and I think about uh, corners all right when, okay. when a corner is guarding a wide receiver and like a wide receiver is running a streak up the sideline yeah the corner isn't running with them and constantly looking at the quarterback 
because because then they can't see what their goal is. Their goal is to guard the wide receiver, and if if they lose focus of that, that wide receiver can do something else, and they have no idea what the fuck's going going, on. Yeah. All right. What they teach a corner to do is you keep your focus on your job, on your responsibility, which is that wide receiver. And then you look for certain cues in that wide receiver that tell you when to turn. Right. Because it, you know, imagine trying to run a sprint. (laughs) Ian's out there. Oh, here comes the glory stories. Nope. No glory stories. (laughs) When me playing defense, like one glory story. All right. We don't want to hear it. He was joking. I know. Stick. But no, like think of, I, I I think about it like running a sprint. Who's going to run fast. Let's say you have three different people running a sprint. Yeah. One person is looking at the finish line the whole time. One person is constantly looking back. They're running forward, their body's facing forward, but they're always looking back. And then you have one guy who's backpedaling. He's going the same direction as you, but he's focused. His entire body and everything is focused to the back, to the start. Okay. Like who's going who's going to get there first? Well, if all things being equal, it's the guy who's focused forward. Okay. That's that's going to get there first. One would think. One Why? Would because think, yeah. he's folks everything is going forward. Everything's leaning forward. You know, if you if you try and run forward looking back, that's going to slow you down. If you try and backpedal, you're still not going to be as fast as the people that are running forward. You're, you're just, just that talented. Like again, all things being equal. Like Take the same runner, have them run the same three All right. races. All right, I got you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That that's my point. Like you're always going to be faster when you're looking ahead, because you can't change the step you just took. You can't change that's that now. Yeah, that's you that can't now change what, what right? happened yeah. at the starting line. Yeah. You it, if you're running hurdles and you knock over the first hurdle, you know, anytime you knock over a hurdle, that's going to slow you down a little bit. If if you already knocked over the the first hurdle, like what you do at the fifth hurdle, you probably turn around. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're at the fifth you're going hurdle, ass forward into a hurdle. You if might you're be at like, the hang on. but if you're at the fifth hurdle, don't look back to the first one. Right. Like keep looking forward to the next step, yeah. because that's what's going to propel you to the end goal. Instead of always just sitting back and like. Runners, even if they knock over a hurdle, they don't go back, reset the hurdle, and try and jump it again. Ray says, for fuck's sake, shut the fuck up. I don't know if he's talking about your your, your metaphor, if he's getting after you tonight. He's or... talking about me. He oh. might be still talking about me. He was talking about me when I, was, I wasn't I was even on last week. Yeah, he's talking about me. <laughs> he's a top fan, though. I do love you, Ray. <laughs> Just fucking with you. Uh, I do want to know what you're talking about. Uh, Ian says, jump higher. <laughs> and... No, I think I think it's a good enough metaphor. I I don't know. The now what? Now, the more that we talk about it, what I said that it wasn't when we were talking about it is I think that it can be that that mentality where it's you know you have the this happened now what I got it like you're saying keep moving forward as opposed to other people say the now what where you're just fucking beat up and you're just like all right like like a lot of us in this this last year it's like all right now what. You know what? What next? That was like, remember the what was it, the killer mosquitoes or whatever it was, like the murder hornets. Murder hornets. There it was you like, go. Everyone was like, "Are you kidding me?" And then like you saw like the I don't know if it was fake or not, but it was like, "Oh, now there's an asteroid headed towards like uh, the the <laughs> United States on election day." I was like, "Go fuck yourself!" <laughs> like, uh, let's get Harry and the boys to get up there and drill it, you know, and and we'll we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll take care of it. Everything's better the with now Bruce what. <laughs> The now what is to get yeah Harry and the boys to get up there. The other now what like oh what else is going to go wrong? That's not I don't know. That's not what it's uh, about. I mean, and, and Ian says, but really, clock only turns one way. I, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just laughing at the comment. The comments are good. Oh, thank I you. I do want to hear race race follow up. I uh, then. Hmm. As far as the the, the, the the COVID side, I will say I, I still don't take it lightly. Um, I tried to listen to a lot of people, uh, different podcasts. I, 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 like you, Nate, I, I didn't have a whole lot of firsthand knowledge of people that had it. I, I hear the horror stories. I tried to uh, not take it lightly. 
Um, but it was interesting to see people's responses and hear people's responses when they're like, all right, well, they, they're, they're question to, to the subject at hand. Well, well now what are you going to do? And I'm like, well, so I'm going to take, take a couple days off work. And uh, the doctor said this, this, and this. Like, well, when are you going to get tested again? I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm not. Like, he, he, didn't, he didn't say get tested again. Like, I, I don't play for the NFL. Like, and I work in an industry that I have, I have documentation based on CDC guidelines from the doctor. X, Y, and Z happens. You are clear to go back to work. Because there is a lot of knowledge out there that doesn't sell ads on Twitter or news sites or anything else. And I'm not belittling the, 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 the horror stories. But, yeah, one of the, like you have it. S steer clear of people. Don't go into nursing homes. Don't be around other people that you think are susceptible to it. Check, check, check. Everything else cleared. I'm back to work. Luckily, like it's it's you, you keep your head on straight. If my my chest was heavy, if I had other symptoms, now I this fucking is terrible, and I got to deal with this. Just like any other medical, uh, you know, emergency. If you get diagnosed with something, it's it's not the end of the world. It's the end of your your existence as you knew it, and now you deal with it, and it could be very very bad. But it doesn't mean that you, you you just give up. It's that now what? What are the what are my options? And you got to keep that 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 wheel turning, like you're talking about with like your metaphors. You got to keep at it. I mean, you just have to lean on other people where you can, and then lean on the experts. But I feel like experts anymore are based on political party or country you live in or what news channel you live by where I was in a stranger's office and he's like, yeah, hey, do this, this, and this. The doctor literally told me, he's like, yeah, I'm surprised I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> like he didn't come in all alarmed. He's talking about other things. And I'm like, wait, doc, do I, am I positive or negative? He's like, oh no, you have it. Yeah. 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 No. I'm like, fuck. He's like, yeah, it sucks. Doesn't it? Like, it was like <laughs> that was the response. And that was the only was, he wasn't being dis like insensitive. He was just like, you feel good, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, all right, let's keep an eye on it. But you couldn't change that you had it. I wish I could. So, I mean, so that's, you know, what's next? You know, um, you know I, I know. Uh, Victoria says, uh, if you test positive, you have, to, you have to have a negative test to return to work. That may be with her. And um, that is, so that's based on industry and what you're doing. Yeah. And what their company policy is. Based on CDC guidelines, that is not the case. To my knowledge, going through it and, and working through a doctor's office, um, if my employer said that you have to test negative, the, the trick of that is, unfortunately, so I'll, I'll, I'm, let's dive into this a little bit further. And Ian says, read above, and I, I absolutely will. Sorry, Ian. I, yeah. um, if you test positive, based on CDC guidelines, if you test positive um, and, and you have symptoms, they say you go back 10 days from your first symptoms, anything related. And then it's the, so mine said three days with, with no symptoms and 10 days. Uh, Dustin, it was 10 days and 24 hours. So even two different doctors said two different things on the form. If you test positive and do not have any symptoms, you need to give it 10 to 14 days. If you test negative, but you have been around someone that has been positive based on when they were tested positive, this is like a fucking math problem, right? Like, <laughs> if you test negative, but you've been, you've been exposed to someone that tested positive, then you need to give 14 days, not from your test, not from their test, from when you were exposed to it, but depending on when they were exposed to it, but you take 14 days just because symptoms may show up within two to 14 days. So for me to Victoria, I followed that. I tested positive with symptoms. I knew when I first had my symptoms, gave it 10 days, and then I had three days at least, I had four days actually, 
with no symptoms. And now, according to what they know of COVID-19, I am no longer contagious. However, I can have a resounding or, or residual cough for up to a month. If I got tested again, it could be still in you know, my system. I could test positive, but based on what they know, I'm no longer contagious. These are the things they don't like put out in the, the national news. But when you see these documents, they're all saying based on CDC guidelines. And you're just like, Jesus, this is exhausting. <laughs> but with, with Liz being in the restaurant industry, she had a test negative and now she's back to work. But she's still wearing a mask. She's still doing everything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's not well, and, being careless. Yeah. And you're still wearing a mask, even though, you know, according, like you said, according to the CDC guidelines, you're no longer contagious. But when you're at work, what they know, right? When when you're at work, you're still wearing a mask whenever customers come in because that's what you're supposed yeah. to do. And I respect the coworkers. You know, we have someone in the shop that doesn't want to, you know, work with me for another week, and it's like, all right, I'll do my best, and and so we're 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 making do with it. We want to make sure everyone's comfortable with it. Yeah. You got you, now what? You, yeah, you just got to keep going on. <laughs> you, you 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 can't stay where you're at. You gotta plan for what's next and again I'm not, i don't want to take it lightly I, I look at it as like you know so it's one of those things where it's like all right so so i give it the the cdc guidelines based on what they know um and so do i stay clear of everyone for two weeks three weeks whatever there's still going to be people that are uncomfortable around me knowing what they know that i got tested i tested positive for a long time and to, to that point is what I said is if you have personal contact and you're worried about it, then you should probably go get tested and, and see where you're at. And, and, and hopefully it's not – again, it's, it's that leper thing. It's like all of a sudden everyone's talking about how prevalent it is out there. And then once I, I tested positive, they're like, oh, God, like how would you get it? I'm like, I walked outside. <laughs> I left my house. That's it. Well, and, and I made that comment to someone, you know, and I – Someone was not happy that uh, things may not shut down. Yeah. So they they had thrown out the comment about uh, suing uh, political officials who made the decision to not shut things down. I'm like, you know what? There's a really good way to uh, prevent you getting it or your family getting it. Don't leave the house. Yeah. Like just just stay inside. And guess what? It's like that with anything. Yeah. You don't want to get the flu? Cool. Don't leave your house. You don't want to get the cold? Well, fine. Don't leave the house. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to get obesity? Don't eat. I got a couple yeah. things here. Victoria says, I'm still amazed we had to tell people to wash your hands. No shit. <laughs> the the Some funny things th in first grade don't take. No, I, I remember. So at the. And I got the, one more from. Uh, um, at the shop, we, we have the, uh, we have the hand soap at the shop. And we have the giant, like, Sam's Club refills. I told you that part. It is. This is the funniest thing. If you look at some of the, the refills. It's like a dad from the 70s. Oh, loaded. gosh. Like, if, if you look at the, the individual pumps for hand soap, you know, it tells you the instructions and wet your hands and how long to rub your hands and rinse off. And, you know, said, said, rin rinse and repeat if yeah, needed. Yeah, you know count you know do the abcs twice or sing twinkle twinkle little star twice whatever like that's how long you're supposed to wash your hands <laughs> when you look at the refill bottle <laughs> the very top the very top line use this hand soap just like you would any other hand soap i i read that's you that and i was like this is like uh my dad or like i i pictured the dad from that 70s show <laughs> and like eric you know is like hey hey Hey, this is new. Uh, this is new soap. It's like, how am I supposed to use it? And he looks at it and he's like, like any other hand soap, you idiot. Dumbass. That's dumbass. That, that was that That's was his. Accurate. Yeah, that was that was his key phrase. Dumbass. So Ian, by way of Mackenzie, says life. Two things: you won't make it out alive, and it's a lot like a roll of toilet paper. Closer to the end you get, the faster it goes until the Rona shows up at the food dog. I, I, I want to say, means. yeah, I don't either. I, Ian's on some medication. He's not. He, he's recovering. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Did he have uh, Corona? No, he had surgery. That's right. Yeah. So he's recovering. We wish him the, the best. Uh, same thing with uh, Ryan Jones is his family. Yeah, absolutely. His wife yeah. uh, had surgery. So we wish them the best uh, 
as well. Uh, like one of the other things uh, when we were talking about the topic, what next? Like you you brought up um, careers. Yeah, that's, and, yeah, we talked about that last and night. Like, you know, doing interviews and the the best example I can come up with uh, was my wife. Over the last couple of years, over the last couple of years, I would say Jess has interviewed for thirty different jobs yeah. at the the university, and all of them she did not get every single one of them. I mean, times where she's doing multiple interviews a week, you know, every you know she's doing like she does well in the interviews, but she just doesn't get the job. And, uh, but the, the thing I have to admire about her is she kept plugging away. Yeah. She, she kept going after the next opportunity and the next opportunity and the next opportunity. She didn't let the failures keep her down and keep her where she was. And eventually it paid off uh, a few weeks ago. She had an interview and got offered a new position. She starts next month. That's fantastic. And, and, you know, she was so relieved to finally have that yes. She'd had no for so long. And every single time she got a no, it it was discouraging for her. Uh, you know, I could see it on her face. It's, it's never We'd have good com- hearing that. You yeah. know, it's not. We, we would have that conversation. She'd be down for a little bit. Yeah. It would get her down temporarily. It was not a permanent thing. Same thing with, you know, whether it's politics, whether it's an election, whether it's sickness. <laughs> She's texting me right now. Um, you know, okay, things didn't go your way. She said, no, but just, uh, I mean, it pisses her off. Oh, you lost it. Um, okay, so say something didn't go your way. So her, her what now, or now what is, nope, it just pisses me off, and I think I'll show you. So you get like you, you get that whole <laughs> knockdown, you get back up again type mentality. Yeah. I mean you you can't sit there and and have one defeat def- define who you are. Yeah. Like that's that's not who you are. Just cuz you you lost one fight doesn't mean it's the end all be all. Yeah. Just cuz you got turned down for one position doesn't mean you you quit fighting. Yeah, so Ian even says, and again, I think he's on uh, some pain meds or whatever. He says, uh, <laughs> love you, Ian. Uh, sounds like some of y'all's dating life. You have, like, <laughs> this is anything in life, and that, that, that you're, not, you're not that far off. I mean, um, you can either let it, it, it take over you. Um, you, can, you can wallow in self-pity. But I think that, you know, like, like Jess is uh, his, uh, Nate's wife. You know, she's, I, when I read that text message, it was like, Sometimes it, it does. It pisses you off, or or maybe you do get sad at first, or you, you it's a tough pill to swallow if it doesn't go your way. And now it's the the now what is I'll show you. Use it as motivation. Use it as motivation. You gotta sometimes you gotta you gotta sharpen your own tools. You gotta you gotta get after it. You gotta really say, all right, well this this wasn't for you, and so I'm, I'm good e- at that. I'm either gonna show you the whoever that person is, but but more likely, you know, because he says. Um, the dating life thing. Sometimes the motivation is that job, is that company, is that that boss, is that that girl or guy that you're you're trying to go after or or you don't succeed with. I I think more often than not, you you know, I'll show you is is with another party. It can be. I yeah. think a lot of times it is. I think this is this is one of those things. It's like you're you're dealt you're dealt. That's the whole thing. You're dealt a certain hand, whatever the situation is. That's what you got to play with. Yeah. And that's that whole thing with when we were talking about, like, you know, can't we all get get along and, you know, the politics side of it. And, and you try to take it into different directions last week, which I appreciate. And that's where we're at now is, you know, it's I was I, I tested positive. I, I, I hoped for the best that I wouldn't have anything serious. I still do. Right. So that's still part of it is that it's an unknown. But this is what I know I can do, and I'm going to do it. Same thing with the job thing with Jess and what you were talking about, or Ian bringing up the dating life is 
Yeah. I've had those harsh realizations when the relationship took a turn when I, I wasn't expecting it. And in the past, I handled it a certain way, and, and I've built off of that so that now that if that happens, hopefully I address it in a way that it, it is not a, a self-wallowing or quicksand type of mentality that I can't get out of. It's, and, and to you guys out there, it's, it's, you take it as the motivation. You're like, all right, so, so it's not always on me. If it was, then it's on us, and then it's the same thing with, with professional and business relationships. I, I, maybe I wasn't qualified for the job. Mm. Maybe it wasn't the right fit. Maybe I'm trying to force a, a square into a circle, you know, because I feel like that's the thing that's supposed to happen. Kind of reminds me a little bit of something Ian uh, had just commented about. There, there's been several uh, positions at my company that uh, I've interviewed for yeah. and didn't get. And the, the thing that I look at a lot of times of all the positions that I didn't get, there's only one person that beat me out that's still with the company. Really? Yes. Everyone else, they got the job instead of me, but then eventually left the company. Whereas I've still, I'm still there. I'm still plugging away. I'm still doing the best job that I can. Yeah. Now, now, eventually it may get to the point where I'm like, all right, enough's enough. I'm going to take my talents elsewhere. South Beach or whatever. Um, South Beach. <laughs> A sports sure reference. Jess is gonna, yeah. <laughs> it's a sports reference. Jess is going to love that. She's got friends in Florida. They have horses in Florida. That's fair. All right. All right. Fair. Um, but no, I, you know, I, I didn't, I sat there. I, I still do. I still did the best that I could. And eventually either an opportunity in my company will uh, present itself or a, an opportunity outside the company yeah. will prevent itself. And I, I've talked to, not only my manager, but uh, even the uh, president of our division. And one of the things that they've said to me is they they want to f- they know I'm overqualified for what I do, and they want to find something for me because they're afraid to lose me. Yeah. And you know, so all these other positions they weren't directly responsible for hiring, so they didn't make that decision. But they they want to do what they can to keep me there because they're afraid to they'd rather yeah, have me there a, to, there's got to be that turning point right the, yeah you can yeah. say that for how long it, exactly you know at okay. some point you gotta you, at, at some point you gotta realize you know what this car's not uh it's not reliable it's not doing what it needs to do i need to look for something better well, again that's that that now what now what mentality it's like all right cool like you've said that now eight times and now i gotta feel like all right, so now what? What do what do I got to do? Do I stay here? Or do I do I deal with this again, just to to have it again in in however many months or a year or whatever, to be told the same thing? It, yeah, I mean, that's part of the whole now what thing too. Is you, you take care of your other people, but right. like you got to make sure that you're, you're taking care of yourself for that. Yeah, I, I think about also uh, in the history of the podcast. You know the the podcast has had a, you know, obviously, almost two and a half years now. There's been a lot of changes. That's true. In the podcast, you know, you and Jake started it. Uh, at, at one point, uh, Jake got a job to where he couldn't do it on Wednesday nights. Yep. So you guys adapted. Yes. And then Jake got a job in another state, uh, which. Obviously, we wish him all the best. He's doing great work out there. Yeah, burn, we're happy. We're happy. Lounge in Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah. He he's now a humidor manager, and he's happy. Like absolutely great for him. Changes things to the podcast. We don't just sit there and go, okay. I guess, I guess that's the end of the podcast. No, it's like okay. What do we do? And so you adapted. Yeah, yeah. And you were you relied on some of those that have been around to collectively that's right pick up the slack not there wasn't a single one of us me dustin or anyone else here that took over and took jake's spot it was a collective effort from all everyone yeah. involved 
Yeah, the what now? Yeah, or now what? Yeah, it was exactly that. You're absolutely right. I mean, it, you have people that you can lean on, and you have people that you can include, and, and you adapt, like you're saying. Um, and it came to to really, you know, honestly, I think that that was a good example of last week. It came to a head. Like I, I could have canceled the podcast because I've been a part of. And that was part of the discussion we had last week. It was. Between between you and me and Dustin, that was part of the, the conversation. And I think the heart of the podcast actually continued. And I think that uh, you and Dustin have been a part of enough of the, the episodes that you carried on what we have done as a community, which is what this is all about. You know, that, you know and, me being the consistent part of it or the driving force of, you know, behind it, Sometimes it is a team effort. It, it, that's that now what is is you you lean on other people. When I had, I had said last week, because uh, because we had uh, we had Brandon lined up from Still Austin that's to right. do it. He he was remote. He had scheduled time to be a part of the conversation and part of the podcast. And I I didn't want to reschedule that. And what I what I told you, uh, you and Dustin was if at the very least let's at least still do part one, right? Let's right. at least still do a whiskey review. Let's still do a cigar review. Let's at least do that part. Let even if we don't have a topic, even if we don't do a part two, let's at least keep the consistency of you us. Guys of us do part two. We hoped. Um, I think you did a great job. Thank you. We, but we wanted to keep a product. I mean, Ray, Ray didn't take a walk during during your guys' episode. <laughs> but we wanted to, <laughs> we wanted to keep a product out there. Like, yeah. you know, during the 145 episodes, there's been one week where we canceled, and that was because of a level two snow emergency. Right, and that was the second week that I was not on the podcast. One was a DR trip back in the day, and yeah. then this one. Yeah. I think it's because the effort that you put in is is again team effort, community effort, and like you're saying, you want to keep it consistent because people believe in it, and and I think that's something that that does tie into this. Well, that's also like when you talk about like what's next, like now what or now what, like we have it in place to where if if there is a uh, a wrench thrown in the engine like last week you being out you being sick like we're still able to do something that's right we, we don't just shut it down we have the tools in place to keep it going same th same thing with with any business if someone's on vacation you gotta have fail safe if, if someone's on vacation the shop doesn't shut down like if, if Brian, so COVID. If, if Brian at the tinderbox goes on vacation, the shop doesn't shut down. If you go on vacation or you have COVID, the shop doesn't shut down. Yeah. I've seen shops where yeah, they shut down. They like they wanted to go on vacation, so they literally closed the doors for a week. That's while yeah. they went on vacation. And, w and why did they do that? Because they didn't have anyone there that could actually run it. So maybe there's two parts of this. There, there's like as we're we're getting into this, as we get towards this this part of the the part two, is maybe there's there's two parts of this. Is you have to prepare for the future, right? So if, if something comes up, then you're ready. You you adapt, like you're saying. But the best thing to do is is to include a team so that if something happens, you don't have to just shut it down, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But the other aspect is is that when the unexpected does happen you you can spend only so much time in in dealing with that unknown before you're like that now what do we shut it down or do we come up with with plan b i i was all for plan b yeah <laughs> uh, i i know uh i know before last week you know the talk uh was leaning more towards shutting it down but I was of the opinion to at least keep the product going, yeah. to keep something out there, uh, to give our listeners and our patrons what they expect, what they wanted, and that was an episode. Let's at least do an episode. Even if it's not a great episode, right. let's at least do an episode. Well, and that's, that's, some, that's been the mentality you know, a couple weeks here and there 
over the last 145. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at Ian. Ian's, yeah, Ian's active right now. Yeah. I, so to you guys out there, like, and if you're listening live, like, let us know what you think of the now what, you know, mentality. If you guys have any questions about, um, you know, how everything's being handled with us. We, I know you guys last week, uh, Nate, you and, you and Dustin and Shannon, you guys talked about the can't we all just get along. Did you guys ever answer that question? Because uh, that's a yes or no question. You 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 asked a closed ended question. <laughs> uh, I think it did come up. Can't we all get it along? Someone had made a comment. Not everyone is always going to get along. Like there's some like kind of like we talk. There's always going to be the extremes on both sides. Right. Whatever the issue is, there's always going to be extremes. Those sides are never going to see eye to eye. They're more than likely never, ever going to get along. It's everyone in between. Yeah. Like, we can get along with most people. There's always going to be someone that we can't get along with because we're just too passionate or too different on an issue. So that's... Th so that's... Hmm. What I wanted to say about that uh, last week and, and with this now what thing is um, this whole agree to disagree type mentality, to your point, doesn't always doesn't work. Right now in America, that doesn't work. People can't agree to disagree. The uh, that that was what I was saying is 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 it's not necessarily maybe it's a little bit of compromise, but it's it's a, a process. If you shut it down based on one moment in time and then whether there's one side that wants to continue to learn or continue the conversation or say, you know what, I, I hear you or I see what you mean, doesn't mean that I always agree with you 100%, but I want to continue the conversation. Sometimes conceding that does not fall on open ears. It's the, you said what you said, you did what you did, period. That's that whole linear history. That's that whole, like, what we are dealing with. And I, I feel like sometimes that that happens when you say, can't we all just get along? The only way that you can even get close to that is to continue the conversation. And listen to an extent, yeah. In my opinion, like you're I mean, gonna you you can disagree, you can you can not see eye to eye, and you can not agree to disagree. You can just be like, no, I disagree with you. Yeah. Well, now I, what? I I, I right? think I mean that that's the now what part of it. It's like so do we do we form our own countries? Do I move? Do I do we break up? Do we start different companies? Do I never talk to you again? Like this is that now what? It's like no, I'm just I'm just pissed. I'm just upset that you you said that or did that. I, I think it's it like I no, think it, but like okay. I think it depends on what? what it is. Like it, if it's a relationship, and like like I've had relationships in the past where like I have certain core beliefs, and if if I'm in a relationship with someone that I realize suddenly that they don't share those core beliefs, then I, I don't think that's a relationship that can continue. Sure. So I'm going to break that relationship off. And I've done that before. Like it, it's a primary issue that we are just so different on that as a relationship, I don't think we're going to work out. So I'm just going to cut it off right now. Okay. Be because so you cut off the conversation. No, no, you, that, I mean that's what you said. I cut off the relationship that's as the in, as in I'm no longer dating that person. Well, take friendships or business or anything else. Don't just make it romantic. I mean, I mean like that's like there are people that when it comes to but you don't do that with professional, right? So if you disagree with the way things are going, principally, like by principle, you don't agree with it. You the, still work there, yeah. And, and le unless it was something that was so outrageous, yeah. Like, like if, if all of a sudden, uh, 
if all of a sudden my employer came out and they said that they were a whatever color supremacist group, <laughs> white supremacists. Well, okay. Yeah. Let's let's say that like. I'm, well, I'm, I gotta go. Like, no, nah, no, nope, I, I, I can't. Like, that is such a big yeah. issue. Yeah. Like, no, we, we can't get along. Mm. You because you think you're better than someone because of the color of your skin or because of the color of their skin. Like, no, we, we can't get along. Fundamental. I got to find something else. That is that would be a core issue. I got uh, you. you know, same thing with. I mean, you can have a friendship, maybe that's like that. Nope. No, as in like <laughs> no. you might be friends with someone, and then all of a sudden. Uh, their stance on an issue is so extreme compared to yours that you're like, you know what? N- no, I'm not. I'm not going to do this. Like I, you, I like you, but I, I don't. I don't think that we can hang out. I yeah. don't. I don't want anything to do with you. I hope you know. I wish you the best. You know, don't wish ill will upon you, right. but nope. I can't do it. So I had one of those things when Andemic asked you guys, uh, have you lost any any friendships? And, and uh, I lost a Facebook friend. I've known the person for a, a while. And I, you know, I, I posted what I posted during the election. And it was it was what they considered a bipartisan. It wasn't uh, of their belief system. And I was more, not neutral, but it was just like, yeah, I'm going to do this, blah, 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 support, you know. Regardless of what it was, it, it was interesting to me that that person who I was not that close with that that is very, very much uh, vocal about their things is I respected where they were coming from. And I had experience with them prior to that where I had been constructive personally. And once it hit the public, it was they like were no like he, I was blocked on Facebook for the first time that I know of. And the fine like. The only thing I had said was, with hey, with all due respect to whatever, it was like, wish the best to your family and friends, and I, I get what you're saying, but I, I don't, I don't have time to, to dive into a you know, conversation that will not change anything. And you're not going to waste your energy on that. It wasn't that. It was like, and again, like since that conversation, my viewpoint has opened up, but it was because of other conversations. It wasn't just vomiting on me their opinion the the, your whole thing can we all just get along it's like yeah we can get along if we actually have a conversation if you just want to like tell me how it is i don't learn from that just like you're not learning from me the now what is like this this should happen whatever whatever the, the situation is job relationship uh the health thing you know what i mean like whether it's covid whether it's cancer whether it's uh you you know like Tom Baker a couple weeks ago, paralyzed. You can either respond to it and just say, no, I don't accept this and I'm going to be pissed off, or no, I don't accept this and let's let's figure out how we can move forward. That's that now what mentality. That's the healthier one, in my opinion. Yeah. Because I'm going to coexist. I'm going to I'm going to want to learn from this, and I want to I want to keep learning because at my age or anyone's age, if you turn your ears off, if you turn your learning off. You know, like you were saying, Nate, um, like with relationships, like if your core fundamentals are are questioned or disagreed upon, you will cut it off. I will encourage you and everyone else to you take a step back. You might cut it off temporarily, but you do it in a way that are like, this is where I'm at. This is important to me. And right now, I think this is best that we take a step back. But if, if you want to share with me things that you think will be constructive, fantastic. Because I want to keep learning. Will it change my mind? I don't think so. But if you just associate with people that have the same mindset as you, you will stop learning. There's a difference between associating and being in a relationship with people that have different mindsets. Mm-hmm. Like... You you can have friends that are that disagree with you on issues. Like I encourage that, yeah, because that's how you're going to learn about those other issues, yeah, 100%. and learn about how other people feel about those issues. When you're talking about uh, an intimate relationship, I think it benefits the relationship and both parties if you agree on the core. 
You can agree on some of the secondary and I think tertiary the foundation. Issues. You're talking about foundation. Exactly. I think foundation makes it easier, absolutely. I think that the, their relationships, romantically, personally, professionally, everything, I think it, that the if you have the the foundation, conversations are easier. Yeah. But again, I, I encourage. And I, I was talking about that in, in weeks past where it was like, I, I was following Twitter feeds. I was following different news sites during all this this very polarized time in our, our lives that if you only follow the news, like if you only follow CNN, you only follow Fox News, like you're selling yourself short. You're, you're self-fulfilling your, your prophecy of how things should be. You, you got to open yourself up, in my opinion, to figure out what else is out there. That, that does help this now what mentality, in my opinion, is that you, you sometimes need to put a tool in your tool belt that you didn't know you needed. I think you need to, to, to figure out, like, I can fucking just keep smacking, with, smacking this thing with this hammer, and eventually it'll loosen up. And someone's like, well, have you tried this? And you're like, I got a hammer. <laughs> just, just, just stop. I don't need your widget. I don't need whatever the fuck you're selling. I got a hammer. I'm going to keep fucking batting this thing until it loosens up and, and I'll be fine. It, it's easier to put a screw into a two by four with a screwdriver than it is a hammer. Yeah. But if you got a drill, uh, uh, eventually a hammer, a drill, eventually a hammer might get it there. Eventually, if you hit it hard enough and enough times, but man, it would have been a whole lot easier if you had a drill or a screwdriver. If you got a problem. Just smack it with a hammer. <laughs> hit it hard enough. Literally and metaphorically. <laughs> Smack it with a hammer. <laughs> I don't know. Going back to the whole now what thing, and and maybe this is where we're getting to that point where uh, I'll, I'll put to you, Nate, for closing remarks. Um, I think we kind of, because I wasn't a part of it, and I maybe maybe pushed it a little bit, but like we we did a hybrid, and we talked about this last night that you know a little bit of hybrid of can we all just get along, and and now what, but. Uh, what about your closing remarks? So when I think now what, you're always any, – anytime someone asks now what, it's always because something something just happened. Like there was an event that happened, good or bad. Yeah. Okay, this happened. Whenever you say now what, that question implies looking forward. You're, you're not – I think the important thing is to not dwell on what happened. Yeah. Like, you can you, you can accept and take time to process and absorb what happened, but don't let that be your main focus. Don't let that be the end-all, be-all. Uh, you know, in, in my personal life, when I was – let go from a career that I, I really wanted and put a lot of energy and effort into, and then it didn't work out. I, there was a, a brief period of time where I, I took the time to deal with it, to accept it, but I didn't let that define me. Mm -hmm. I didn't let that be the end all be all. I, pursued what was next where do i go from here yep again that's it's it's important you know what your focus is where where your eyes are trained mm. are, you, are you trained on what happened or are you trained on where you go and i think that makes a huge difference on the outcome going forward Yeah, I think to, to build off of that, you know, I, I think that uh, I've had those experiences, you know, when I was let go, mm -hmm. I, I've been broken up with, I've, I've gone through my, you know, uh, divorce, I've, I've gone through um, this last year with everyone. There's sometimes you can't be prepared for everything, but what I will encourage everyone to do is Be prepared for your now what. Constantly. This is a mindset that, that I still struggle with, right? So um, there's, a, there's a fine line that I think that people, people walk through. 
Um, so financially, right? So, so what do we got to do? We got to, we got to make sure that we're, we're saving for retirement, but also we need to enjoy our everyday life. Tough line to walk, right? Don't spend any money now, live like a hermit and make sure that you have enough in case you live, you know, until you're 85, but you can't touch anything and you can't enjoy life until you're 65. Okay. You talk about things that, you know, now what with, with, with jobs, you, you play it safe. You do the, what, what used to be the norm, which was you work a job for 30 some years, right? You, you get a pension and, and you, you, you're good. You got retirement, you got a good wage, but you didn't push yourself. You didn't, you didn't actually go for anything. You didn't keep striving today's world. You're not an entrepreneur. You didn't, you didn't start a social media account. You just went to work. Like people, some people would say like, oh, what a, what a loser. You're just going to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I also take care of my family. I'm taking care of myself and I'm also saving re for retirement. It's not exciting. I look at the now what mentality, you know, it's, 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 there's some things that you need to keep pushing forward and, and just plow through it. When things are tough, but I don't think you should dwell on it. I think that when you guys were talking last week about can't we all just get along, you you said that that's not always the case. I agree, and I think I'll I'll add to that is that if you don't agree, or you do agree, now what? You got to keep keep growing. I'll say the biggest thing that I've learned in the last probably 10 years of my life is that I wasn't prepared for everything and I know I won't be. But what I think that the now what mentality podcast that you were talking about included the friendships that you, you sometimes think are solid that, that, that aren't. And sometimes you overreact that they, you thought they were solid and that they weren't but really they are because you shut down because you based it on one moment on what the viewpoint was and you don't keep moving forward together. You don't do a now what you don't, you don't put an effort out there. I think that, uh, that's where the loss is. And I think that this is something that we can all, we can all get better at. Things didn't go your way. Or things went your way, but they didn't go the way of the someone that you thought that was important to you. And now you're just stuck in that moment of time, and it's, that's the loss. That's the now what. It's, it's moving forward. Like you said, Nate, it's, it's, it's looking forward, and there's going to be some L's there, man. They're, you're going to lose. And other people that you care about are going to lose. You can either treat it like a dog and rub their face in it that you made a mistake. <laughs> Or you can say, all right, this happened. Now what? Let me, let me make you feel better. Make me feel better. Because I think that's, that's the important part of it. I think that, that that's it. This is what this podcast has been about. I think it is. You guys carried it last week. And now that I'm back on and, and I'm not looking at the comments because I feel like maybe they don't want them to. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that, that it's all about uh, building yourself up and building other people up, and that's the now what right there. You, you take the hand that you're dealt and you, um, you, play that, you play that hand. Make the best of what Sometimes you Sometimes you take the L and you get back in the game. And, and, and but you can learn from L's. That's it. I agree completely. You can grow from L's. I agree. I think that's good. That's a good way to end it, man. You can <laughs> you can you can learn from L's. Yeah. You should. Yeah. You absolutely should. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>